Welcome to Horse Racing Gamer, where champions are made. YouTube, what's going on? It is Horse Racing Gamer here, and we are back with Gal Racer 2004. Um, we're leaving off from where the last episode left off. I think this should be my last episode in the recording session, which, as you guys know, my recording sessions means at least four or five episodes for you guys at a time um, and then I usually take a one to two week break so getting to the end here this particular one he stargazing my dude is finally back up in the super mile cup um, he's not in the this I think this is his first GWS turf race so I mean I guess I put him in this race because we're going for the mile champ title with him really we're close so I don't think we're really doing this for the the uh, for the points, but you know what? I'm kind of mad I didn't put Butterfly Effect in here. I already had him registered in this race, not even realizing I was going to be using Butterfly Effect for the turf uh, title this year in the GWS. So all the horses she has to beat, which is Velvet Apollo, Provident Time, they're here. Now the only difference is. Stargazing might have a chance to knock them off. And granted, he's expected to finish worse than them, which is a given. That's what they've always thought. But he has a chance. I mean, if he if we're able to win this race with Stargazing, I mean, he has just as equal of a chance to win as Butterfly Effect, really. So I would just go back and forth between the two. But um if anything, it would be great just to kind of keep some points away from like Velvet Apollo or, or Provident Time, just to kind of help Butterfly Effect out. Like if we can't win this race, at least trying to take any points away from them would be a win. Um, Stargazing's still strong, man. If I tap into his last corner leader and get him going at the right time, he's still proving that he's extremely tough to beat once he gets ahead of the field into the final stretch like you need a really powerful strong horse to make a rally so yeah I mean him winning this race I'm not going to be mad at because it's not taking any points away from butterfly effect it's keeping the top two of this GWS turf series to my horses and not the AI that that's what winning this race would do <laughs> Just to make sure one of them is going to get the title. So, we'll see. Okay, okay start. Uh, I'm not even going to worry about the favorites. I'm just going to just run our race, and we just need to try to win, really. That's all that matters. We need to try to win. And doing that, like I said, would put us and Butterfly Effect both in, this, in, in a really good spot. Stargazing could still chase this if he wanted to, or we could just have it focus on Butterfly Effect. But really, for stargazing, I mean, we're focusing on the mile champ title with him now. So this winning this benefits him f towards the mile champ title, and it also helps take points away to help butterfly effect. So hopefully, he can kind of do them both a favor. Now this is where he likes to go crazy and just go to the front. And like I can't control him. I try to, and I just I had to remind myself to stop. He just goes to the front. <laughs> There's nothing I can do about it. He's got two sevens, so that's good. I had to go early. I'm trying to get. I don't know if last corner leader will kick in. Ah, I could have waited longer for the Revo. Uh, come on, Star. You got a good drive here, bud. Fight. Man, that did not go how I wanted it to. And I don't think we're taking any points away from anybody because I got going a little bit too late. Unless he taps into stretch burst here, and he does. Maybe we can snatch some points off of that's bold voice. Not the horse you'd want to take points off of. Definitely got started too late, for sure. Provident Time finished. Velvet Apollo. Okay, we did take some points away from Velvet Apollo, but Provident Time did get the win. But I'm not even worried about that horse because I think Butterfly Effect is proven. I mean, she's she beat him. So, yeah, that, that's an okay effort there from Stargazing, but got that started a little bit late. And, um, darn, you know. At least we took some points away from Velvet Apollo. I think she was higher up in the GWS standing. So, I think that win will put Provident Time now in first place. I think. By two points, though. 
So, Butterfly Effect, I mean, she should still be okay. Um, Toxic Blonde, she's up in the Chicago Stakes, 9.5. She's expected to finish 6, that's not terrible. Feeling a lot better with her now. Let's see if we can continue to build on this. But man, I um, that's a race I wish I could have back. Got started too late. Like, he needed to be in the front. That was the only chance I think we were going to have at winning. Really. Like, he's a very tough, strong horse. But, like, what makes him so hard to beat is, you know, him being able to get into the lead, activating last corner leader, and then we were able to just hold the field off. Like, they can't rally enough momentum to get past us. But if he's not already in first by the time we hit the final stretch, the final two and a half furlongs of the race, then he do, he's not like a comeback type of horse, really. We've had some races where he was able to drive, but like not like... He hasn't been able to come back against super strong horses. He's not that type of horse. Like I feel like I was able to do that with Vivid Legend and Crimson Arc quite a bit. I don't know if Stargazing is that quite type of horse as great as he's been I don't know if he's that type yet or, or if he ever will be so you know his best advantage is to make sure that he's in first when you hit the final straight uh, that's what I just have to remind myself we got started too late in that race and um, like I said he's not the best at playing catch up he's best at making other horses have to catch up to him and I kind of missed the window on that so that's a bummer because at the end of the day, like Provident Time won the race. I would have liked to have taken, like I said, that win away from him and Velvet Apollo. But, you know, he got the win. And uh, Velvet Apollo, like I said, at least we don't have to really worry about her being too uh, too threatening for, for a bit of time. I'm sending Tosic to the front now because we got to get her on a good run here. Come on, Toxic. That might have been a really well-timed spurt, or I could have jumped the gun too soon, but she's looking good here. Toxic Blonde is from Blue's Breeze. Let's not forget. And I think she's going to walk away with this, guys. Close race, okay, and she's going to pull away. Toxic Blonde is on a roll here, guys. <laughs> you know, her stats aren't that great, but she's winning, and winning nicely. <laughs> Toxic Blonde, you know, I got to be honest, you were, I was really close to kind of thinking it wasn't going to work with you, but you, you're, you're, you're proving to me that it can work with you. I swear that's her third grade one. She wins the Chicago S. <laughs> and actually the spurt was perfect. I thought I mistimed it and apparently not. Yeah, that's her third grade one, people. <laughs> Classic Blonde is on a roll right now. My goodness. And her stablemate, Tigress of Stone, is up. And she's the favorite. Can this be her third grade one? Both of the Phillies. Both of the three-year-old Phillies going hammer and tongue here. Winning grade ones, essentially. They're exchanging them. Stablemates born at the same time. Um, wow. Toxic Blonde. That's her third grade one win. <laughs> yeah, she's... She definitely has that speed of Blue's Breeze in her. That's why I was talking about in the last episode, when I was talking about Blue's Breeze, I'm like, if he works as a sire, then I will get some of that in my foals. Because for some reason, even if his speed rating isn't as high as other horses, he's just really fast out there. And I feel like we've we've been able to get that with Toxic Blonde. And of course, you have to also remember, I think Lee's Gold in the mix there. So that explains it. But Tigers of Stone were the favorite. I mean, who's... Firm Ruby, okay, good horse. Brown Desert, not worry. Beauty Love, whatever. Mrs. Tigress of Stones is a uh, race to win. From Flying Cowboy out of Pink Gemstone. Last corner leader, need to make sure we're conscious of that. But again, this should be a pretty easy grade one victory. Yeah, Toxic Blonde is, um, she's starting to do Moonbee like things where, like, I didn't have any high expectations for her but like in him but Moonbee exceeded my expectations completely blew them off the charts and Toxic Blonde is starting to do the same thing because she looked like she was going to be a troublesome horse in the beginning did she not 
she looked really troublesome and it's, it hasn't even taken that long for her to go from being troublesome to now winning grade ones back to back like i don't know it, it's weird and it really happened when i took the blinkers off of her i'm not even making that up i don't know if that's just coincidence but it the the improvement happened quickly, which is why I think maybe the blinkers have more to do with it. Because, like, for, for her to have just improved that quickly usually doesn't happen for me with any horse, really. Like, if they get better, it's because they've gradually gotten better. They don't just all of a sudden just go from being, you know, troublesome and hard to win with to then all of a sudden just winning. Like, usually it's a progression, always. So I think taking the blinkers off of her worked, and... It, it does lead me to believe that maybe there is some coding in this game with blinkers on the horses, depending on their leg types, but I can't prove it. And, let, and let's be honest, nobody really knows, right? Unless somebody, one of us can talk to Tecmo. Like, you don't know what the developers could have put into the coding that wasn't revealed in any documents or PDFs or, or any sort of readmes from that time period. That's all just knowledge known within the developers of the company. So who's not to say that they maybe worked in some mechanic with putting blinkers on your horses and their leg types? I don't know, man. I mean, I think it's possible. Now, oh, Tigris, we're going to have to start pushing her now. She's got the stamina. She can handle it. She's not going to get a Rebo, but we are going to get last corner leader. Who is this keeping up with me? Brown Desert. Wow. And that horse got a great run. Oh, what happened? Oh, Tigris, no. Oh, no. She's still fighting. She's still fighting. I don't know how. She's fighting. She gets back. She's back in front. Dude, if she managed to win that race after all of those kerfuffles. Yes, I said kerfuffles. And no. I, I don't even know what happened. I, we came off of turn four, and I thought she was clear, and that was we were smooth sailing. Brown Desert kept up with us, and for some reason, I feel like that bothered her. Ah, oh, that's a race! I oh my goodness, that one and that one stings because that was a perfect race for her to win, and it didn't happen because she got bothered by something. What was it? She just went wild all of a sudden. Is it because she felt like I whipped too early? Oh, I take that back. Provident Time is competing for the sprint, not the turf. Ignore all that nonsense I said about him and Butterfly Effect. If anything, I just put Stargazing to the middle of the board to maybe help him have a chance at going for that title. But Provident Time is kind of pulling away. We're going to have to get a win with Golden Boy here soon. But Butterfly Effect is fine. Now I think about it. I, pfft, duh. Seekers of Stone, she gets four points. Oh, man, I, oh, that race was so not what I wanted, guys. I, I swear. Uh, I feel like those are the only races I drop with her. What is that auto ability? Is that something I don't... Is, is that what's causing that? Because I swear that's the second time it's happened with her. That's the second or third time it's happened with her. I don't think it's anything in her stats clearly. None of her stats are bad. It's It's got to be whatever that ability is, and I have no idea what it is. That's really, like, annoying. Because that's, like, at least the third time it's happened. And it doesn't happen on any other horse except for her. It has to have something to do with that latent or that auto ability, which, again, is extremely annoying. <sighs> so this is for this. This is a sprint territory. The turf would be something longer. I don't know what to put her in because I don't know if I'm going to save this race for somebody else. But you know what? I mean, if she gets on the board for the sprint, why shouldn't she have a chance? I'm, I'm going to go ahead and do that. Toxic Blonde. I guess they gave you double S for a reason because you've won three grade ones out of your five wins. <laughs> and she's, she's won three grade ones back to back. And look at her odds. We were supposed to finish 14th. She won. We were supposed to finish 6th. She won. We are supposed to finish 6th again. She won. And again, look at Toxic Blonde's stats. I mean, they're nothing impressive. I mean, this would probably turn a lot of people away if you saw her in the shop. But she's already won three grade ones. Blues Breeze and Lee's Gold statistically it's not what i want on my horses I, i'm loving the performance we're getting but 
Mike, where the bad stats have to be from Blues Breeze to some extent. Some of the lower end ones, because he has some B average stats, so I feel like he has B's and C's. It's gotta be, yeah. I mean, I, uh, I don't like seeing the mixture of 30 and 40 and 50, you know, like in there and with 60. It's just, it's all, it's top to bottom. But I mean, she's winning. That's the crazy thing. And again, she is, I mean, she's fast. 77 speed, 72 sting, 71 power as well. She's fast and she's very powerful. So everything, I mean, that that's kind of making up for her, her lesser stats, I'm starting to realize. Like her being able to be very fast and her being able to maintain that speed and be powerful to handle a slope or a rough with that type of speed, that does make her a very dangerous horse, realistically. It's just like... I mean, she's winning pretty convincingly, too. It's not even like it's close. Like, she's winning <laughs> in races where she's not even the favorite. Like, the game gave her the double S rating for the reason, but then they're still not booking her as, like, first. No, she doesn't have the stamina for 12. She's 7 to question mark. I'm not running her 12. Um, I mean, I can run her in the Victoria S. You know, I thought I was going to save that for somebody, but maybe not. I'm going to run her in the Victoria S. She's fast. Let's continue to use that speed to our advantage. A lot of races here today. Um, yeah, I'm really bummed out about that Tigris of Stone race, man. That's Her stats are too good for me to be blundering races like that. But again, if she has a really bad auto ability that's making that weird thing happen in the stretch, then I don't know what to do. There's not too much I can do to figure that out. You know, that's a, that's such a random thing. It could be a number of abilities. And, like, trying to test them all out while trying to win is not a good idea. So, it's like, I just have to find a way to win without that happening. But, in all honesty, I, f I feel like it's happening when I'm getting her started too, too close to another horse's spurt. Or at the same time. I'm noticing it when there's other horses, like, kind of right by her. I think I think each time it's happened, she's almost been in, in a head-to-head -head with another horse. Like, they've always been relatively close. I don't feel like it's happened when we've been just clearly out in front by a length or two. So that's, I just, I don't know what it is, but I think I just have to get better about getting her in first, which is what I wanted to do in her last race. I just think I just mistimed it. I was off by probably a couple a couple tenths or whatever of a second in regards to my timing and that other horse brown desert got a really good jump on us on the outside i just went a little bit too late um i needed to go sooner i didn't expect brown desert to pick up in the gear that horse almost smoked us really <laughs> anyways butterfly effect she's up 12 furlong lead oaks we're going for that lawn champ title with her she's been awesome at 12 so far she's not the favorite today eager judges i mean okay i mean that's a good mare sure but um I mean, I think we can win this, especially if she's in front. And the good thing about this race is the favorite wants to sit off the pace. We're going to be leading, and I don't think anybody's going to challenge us. I oh, don't know, three front runners. Ugh. Well, hopefully this pace is not fast, but I don't even think those horses have that much of a chance. So this could be a nasty pace that nobody wants to participate in. So I guess we'll see. Hmm. Well, it's not a GWS race, but um, it's a good break for her, and she's going for that Lawn Champ title on top of trying to stay in the GWS fight. So let's see if we can um get it done here. Okay, it's a good start. Let's go push out to the front. Let's go, my girl. All right. Get clear, get clear, get clear. I know these fools are going to try to challenge you. Keep your cool. Keep your cool. Okay, is that is that Thompson? Of course it is. Thompson, go away, please. Go away. Your horse has no chance today. Go away. Like, I have to keep this lead because I would like to win this race. And I think we need to make sure that she stays in front comfortably. 
There we go. Now they've dropped off. I can dial her back quite a bit, and now she can get into that nice rhythm. She's not going to get a rebo. She doesn't need it. It's fine. She'll hit solo soon. Her stamina should be fine. We had to run quite heavy in the beginning, but she's strong enough to handle that. That's the good thing I like about her. Like, she's not going to... She's not going to get completely drained from having to run hard in the first two or three furlongs to establish her position. I don't really get that on my horses a lot, so it's good to finally have one that can handle that and not be drained before we even hit the straight. You know what I mean? Like, that's just annoying. Especially if you have a front runner that's struggling to get to the front. Okay, so last corner leader in solo. I didn't realize last corner leader would activate that early on this track, but I guess since that was the turn, that makes sense. So I'm not going to get going until I see the rest of the field going. Oh, they're starting a really late run. That's fine. That's fine. Okay, now we can go. She's strong. My girl is strong, man. Okay, I'm just going to let her run. I'm just going to let her run for a bit. I'm just going to let her run. I'm just going to let her run, man. What I've been saying, she is so strong when she's able to stay at the front, dude. And she can handle running hard for three furlongs in the beginning of the race, not be phased, and blow the field apart by more than six lengths. Butterfly Effect is the real deal. I've been saying that since she's been two years old. She's four now, and I'm going to continue to say it because she's proving she is the real deal. And she gets another 12 furlong win. I mean, her endurance is insane, like... She's the broodmare I've been wanting with the stamina. And that's not to say Tigress of Stone can't also be that broodmare. But for now, it's Butterfly Effect. And she's continuing to set records. She wins that by more than seven lengths. Destroys the favorite Eager Judge who finishes in sixth. I've been saying my girl has been the real deal since day one, quite literally. I swear in the live stream, there was a little bit of disrespect going to me and my girl Butterfly Effect. And I'm like, you guys don't understand. She's not just an average horse. She is very, very good. Finally, you know? It's like, don't be surprised that we finally have a Butterfly Effect type of horse. Where even if her breaking rating is not like an 80 or a 90, she's still strong enough to win. And win by 7 lengths and set records at 12 furlongs. It's pretty decent. Especially for one of my horses since, like, we've, you know, breeding has kind of been a disaster up until the last couple of years in this game, which is, like, in real time, the last couple of months that I've obviously redefined my breeding and how I wanted to go about building really good horses in this game from using other horses that people don't usually use, for one, or using my own horses for two. Everybody can build super horses from, you know... Um, the strongest horses in this game. Like, the strongest Galbracer Originals are already given to us. We, we can all go and get the best horses and breed super horses instantly. But I like the challenge and the grind of using your own horses, which means you have to start from some point of, you know, maybe having, like, an average horse instead of just already having, like, a super good horse and working upwards from there. I think that's what's always the best part about playing this game for me. And I think I've talked about that, but I just love being able to create great horses from my own great horses that we've run with, you know, even if they all still have to come from like a, you know, a Galbracer original that that's the obvious one. But it's like when it comes to building super horses in this game, I love the feeling of saying I built that super horse using my own in-game breeding. Like I, I didn't use any of the original parents for several generations, right? I always think that's a cool feeling. Now we're up with Moon B here. Lead sprint five furlongs. Going for Sprint Champ title with this dude, I think. Yeah. Because he got the Mile Champ title in the GWS sprint. So I'm going for the Sprint Champ title, which would be his third. Didn't think Moon B would be on the verge of getting potentially third title. But from King B and Pink Gemstone, I guess I should not be surprised. Pink Gemstone just seems to be a really good broodmare. I'm so happy that she is working in that regards. But, I mean, Pink was... Pink really competed well above her limits. Like, she always found a way to push the envelope and finish better than where she was supposed to. And I think that really is carried through 
to Moonbee. A lot of that is carried through to Moonbee. Because this guy's stats are nothing great, but he's finding ways to win and beat some of the best horses in the game, you know? <laughs> like, I swear to you, those type of traits transfer, I think, in horses. Especially if you're able to get good results with them. I forgot, this is a short race. Okay, Moon, we gotta kinda rock and roll here, bud. May have been a slow start. Well, he can run him down, though. He's running him down. Moon is running Flying Fan down, but that's not our threat today. We have the two on the inside. Come on, Moon. Fight strong. That's Captain Wave going right by us. And the force coming up. Stretch Burst, though. He can fight back, but I think it's too late. I think that's going to be good enough just for second. No, they're going to give us third. Ah, good effort, Moon, man. Good effort. I think I, I timed that a bit late, too. Not going to lie, I kind of forgot it was that quick. <laughs> I feel like it's always the five furlong races that sneak up on me. If I'm not completely zoned in, I'm like, oh, yeah, this race is, like, extremely fast. I kind of need to pay attention. Uh, oh, well. There's more short races like that we can try to get with Moon. It's not, it wasn't his last race, not even close. I'll get that back. Formal Opera's up. Um, I'm running him ten and a half because, well, I'm running him back on the turf now because like there's no more dirt titles for him to win except for maybe Dirt Emperor, but that just requires me winning the Universal Cup three times in a row. So like I can run him on dirt only that one time through the whole year, and then I could run him on turf the rest. So it's not like I have to run him on dirt progressively anymore at all. So we're switching him back to turf, which we I think we we may struggle a bit because obviously he's really a dirt horse. Um, but, you know, I think we can win these races. He's such a strong horse. I, I would be shocked if he couldn't still win these races on the turf. And his turf rating is still good. It's not great, but, I mean, it's one it's one rating off of great. So, with his speed, his stamina, and his heart, like, he should be able to get that done. So... Ah, oh, man. Alright. Desert Diver with the record here still? I set that record with him, like, ages ago. How? <laughs> I mean, I feel like I've run this race quite a bit since Desert Diver has been gone. And we've really not had anyone been able to beat that. I don't know if that's impressive on behalf of Desert Diver or depressing on behalf of me and my horses. Like, I don't, I don't know which one it is. Whatever, man. Um. <laughs> well, the GWS situation is not as easy as I thought it would be. I thought once I figured it out, we'd kind of be able to kick into gear. And granted, you know, we're still competing. But that Provident Time race with Stargazing, I really kind of. I was being out a bit because, well, it bummed me out. And then I figured out, like, obviously he wasn't competing in the same, uh, the same classification as Butterfly Effect is. So, like, Provident Time winning didn't affect Butterfly Effect at all. But that still would have been nice to keep those points away from, like, I think Golden Boy, who's fighting in the sprint. You know what I mean? I still wanted to keep Provident Time from winning at all costs, really. That's what I'm trying to say. Oh, I forgot this is a straight, so didn't time my stretch perfectly, but I mean, we're strong enough. Is that the favorite up there? That is perfect top. We can drive in on this horse, can we not? Drive in. Uh, perfect top is staying. Drive in. Ability, please. Ability. We're getting past. We had to work for that one. My gosh, I made that so hard for no real reason. But we get the win. That's a big win there for Formal Opera because I made that hard. But you know what? Hats off to Perfect Top. That horse stayed strong for still majority of the race until we just caught them under the last furlong. So, <laughs> this horse can win on anything, but as he should, he's the greatest throw of all time.
So people really try to debate that. It's like, okay, there have been other great racehorses, but... You know, Secretariat, not just because of the winning the Triple Crown, he was winning these races by crazy lanes, like insane lanes. Dude was the true definition of a super horse, quite literally, by his, you know, by his anatomy and his physiology. Like, dude was seriously a super horse. That's extremely rare. You know, at least in American horse racing, for sure. I mean, that, that guy did crazy things. Oh, butterfly effect. I'm just so, like, you've been... She's on a roll. That was her 10th grade one win. My girl is just... She's... <laughs> I knew she was going to be special. That's why I had to name her and do the tack. Like, usually when I know those horses are going to be special, I, I have to name them myself. It's not like I'm trying to take it away from anybody. It's like, I know this is going to be a special horse. You know, I just... I have to I I have to I have to see the dream come true basically. You know, I have to see it come to fruition. Now, since we're going for that 12 furlong title, Paris Royal 15 and a half. That's insane, but I'm so curious <laughs> if she could run that. Her stamp 73, it's not the best. I mean, my goodness, is that even worth it? Is there anything else I can do before that? Maybe that's, like, really crazy. No, World Turf Cup. Duh, Eric. Come on. Let's be smart. Why why run her in this when you can actually run her in a race that matters for the championship that she's fighting in, which is the GWF Turf. Not to mention. GWS Turf, excuse me. But not to mention, this is also 12 furlongs, which if she wins this, she might also, at least at this point, get the lawn champ title i swear she's let me see uh, that was her fourth or fifth win that was her fifth win at 12 furlong so i swear one more which could be this world turf cup she wins this she could become the lawn champ which would be her second title with all rounder you know if she retired with three titles i'd be very happy i mean she's been the strongest philly that I've had as a created original. She's been the strongest, stronger than Chasing Hearts. Chasing Hearts only won 12 times with five grade ones. Keep that in mind. Butterfly Effect has already won 16 times with 10 G1s. You know, she's doubled Chasing Hearts' grade one wins. She has a title uh, as well, which Chasing Heart also had for the GWS turf, I believe. Or the no, the GW is sprint, and she's got four more wins right now, and her stats are really solid. Not to say, obviously, chasing hearts wasn't, but like she doesn't have any bad stats. Heart is only fifty-four, but you know she's got good abilities except for bears. Yeah, butterfly effect is um, like I've been saying, she is the real Adila. Now, Moonbeam. I'm still chasing that, that sprint title? What am I chasing with you? The sprint, right? Yeah, we're chasing sprint champ with him. So, I'm going to keep Moon at the short distances. Pair of sprint. I mean, I don't really want to put him back in the sprint. I'm going to leave that open. So, I can run him seven in the Aquarius. See if he can tackle that. I think everybody else is good. Oh, Formal Opera. That is your 10th grade one win, big dog. On a roll. 10 and a half. So let's stick in that 10 range for him. Get a mid champ title. Be pretty cool. Does, 10, does 11 count for mid champ? Yeah, 11 does count, right? 11 is. Or Saturn. Let me see. You know what? Yeah, let's just race some of that 10. Let's just stay on that trajectory. Saturn Stakes in Los Angeles should be able to get that done. Okay, I think we're pretty much all good. Yeah. Uh, okay. Stargazing. Why do they have you in a grade 2? We're still chasing the Mile Champ title. It's turning out a little bit harder than I thought. Uh, 
Um, World Mile Cup? Was I going to put somebody else in that race? Hold on. Let me count. Let me think. Who would be in that race? That is for the GW. You know, that actually makes sense. He is in the sprint. This is, yeah. I mean, hey. I think we still got to prove we can do that with this dude. Yeah, he's five, but, you know. He's still very strong. I mean, he's finishing consistently. He's not dropping out of out of the top three. So it's like it's just the hits are coming in waves. Um, as far as you know, second and third place, you know. But he's still winning every third of the time it seems. So. Yeah, we just I, th I just think we just have to stay focused. And like I said, I have to really be conscious of getting him ahead into the lead. That's his best chance to win. If he's not in the lead heading into turn four, um, then, yeah, he's not he's going to struggle to fight back. But we're switching gears here because our two year old Vivid Gemstone, who had an impressive six furlong or six length not six furlongs that would be insane six length win in his open decided to toss him into a grade one he expected to finish third it's kind of where i thought he would be based off of that grade one performance so frail bet is here and pale winner is the favorite i'm just worried about us with vivid gemstone in his race we got him with this tack i want to see how he looks with the gray and the pink remember i did it in the last episode uh, as far as his bandages, predominantly gray with the pink stripes. I want to see how that looks out on track. Can't really see it right now because of the freaking stupid graphics and everything in the way. But, yeah. I still wanted to pay some homage to Pink Gemstone with uh, her pink color tack. So, I see how he actually looks. I kind of like the gray from a distance, and then when you get a shot of the pink, I think it's nice up close. It kind of gives it an illusion of a different kind of tack color. So I think I'm actually going to stick with it for him. Vivid Gemstone. I'll see how you rock and roll here today, bud. Alright, good start. He punches out really well. Yeah, I kind of like how he actually looks with the gray and the pink. I think I'm actually going to let him rock with this for a while. I can always change it if I get sick of it, but I like his look right now. He's got the red shadow wool. You see the wedge shadow wool. He's got the gray bandages with the pink stripes. He's looking good, though. Looking really good. Like Vivid Legend here running at the front. He's looking really good. All right. Let's, let's kind of get a move. Two sevens. Let's get a move. Let's get a move. Let's catch these horses napping. I think he can hold. Did I start too soon? Nope. Started just in time. <laughs> Pull away, Vivid. Pull away. Oh, no. The four is still coming. Come on, Vivid. You got him, bro. You got him, man. Oh, come on, Vivid. Are we really going to let this four beat us? There's no way. Push. Push, Vivid. I swear the four got us. The four got us clear. It wasn't even a photo finish. Wow. I mean, that's still a great result, but like, that should have been us. What the F? Wow. Well, I mean, Vivid Gemstone. Proving he's a good racehorse. Shocker from Vivid Legend out of Pink Gemstone. So it's a sign of more good things to come. We'll get that win. That's annoying. Uh, Pale Winter just literally got us at the line. Like, there was nothing I could do. I was just stuck in the revolution. There was nothing I could have done. <laughs> so they doubles up in the Dublin Philly Stakes. Especially expected to finish 14th, which is good because, again, she has a long growth type. So I can really see what she's made of right now. I mean, she's not great one ready with these stats, but, you know. If we can beat a couple of horses, that'd be cool. If we could finish in the top five, that'd be amazing. I just want to see how she fights. I have to test my horse's guts in the beginning. I always do, because if, they, if they're if they not gutsy, 
is going to be a very miserable and rough time with them. You guys know how I like my horses. Calm. Strong. A lot of heart. A lot of guts. If they can't possess all of those qualities, then we will not have a good time. That's just how it goes over here, man. Strong. Calm. And, uh... I wish there was another word that kind of rhymed with those, but there's not. So, yeah. Strong, calm, and gutsy. Those are the type of horses I like and need. So, Sedate Devil, even though you were years off of your prime, I just want to see, as a two-year-old, how do you actually fight when you're completely outclassed? What is your response? That's what I want to know. Some horses show you early on, even when they're not at their peak, that they are very gutsy horses. She doesn't have a lot of stamina naturally, so we just kind of have to work with what we got here. I was looking for the revolution, but it's fine. You know what? She's not fighting badly here. I think we're going to drop out at some point because her power rating is not good right now. But she's fighting well, considering she's supposed to be in last place. That was two places off from a top five. Well, tenth. Okay. Five places off from a top five. It looked like we were finished in eighth. Apparently not. <laughs> Apparently Eric just can't read. <laughs> So she beats four horses and she was nowhere close. So she can do that now. I would suspect when she hits her peak, it's just going to be an absolute fun time with uh, Sedate Devil. That's what I like to see. That's what we like to see. That's what we like to hear. All right. Rolling on. Who's up now? Alright, who do I need to check? Um, well, I definitely want to get her wins. I don't, I don't just want to like waste her in races. So I'm certainly going to drop her in class for now. Because she's still got a couple years to develop. Like, once I feel like winning the easier, these type of races are too easy, then I'll start moving her up, you know. But if we can stack grade 3 and grade 2 wins until she's ready to hit the grade 1 circuit for real, like, that's perfectly fine with me. I mean, I think that works better anyways. So, Vivid Gemstone, off of that performance, he almost won. It kind of robbed us, really. But he moves up to B ranked. He has Dominator, which is fantastic to know. Saturday 7 Speed, no kidding. So I gotta figure out the rest. 56 Stam. He must have inherited that from Pink. His growth type looks like he's gonna be normal. So he'll probably peak at four, four and a half. Four and a half, maybe. I hope. Four would be a little bit early for my liking. But if he wins every race between now and then, then I guess that's a different story. Um. I mean, I don't really want to run you in a grade two. I think let's run another grade one. Running him in this race would be pointless because, like, he's not a dirt horse. Like, there's really nothing to prove. I'm going to run him seven again. Let's run him in Paris. He's, I mean, he's capable of winning these races now, I think. I feel like that for sure. That's why I don't really want him. He's somebody I don't think we need to take any time with. I think he's ready to win at the grade one level right now. For sure. As he should be. So it's like let's let's go ahead and just get to it, right? Alright. Do 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 Let's just see how this goes. Alright. Please cowboy up again in a grade three this time. And uh, we should be the favorite, without a shadow of a doubt. This is easy territory, and I might stay here for a little bit to stack some wins. And just to figure out the rest of these stats, too. It's also a good thing to think about. I mean, like, I'll toss these horses in grade ones when I think, like, we can actually win them. But I'm not just going to 
I'm not going to do that too much randomly in their two-year-old campaign. Unless I'm, sp like, specifically trying to figure something out. Um, especially if I know their growth types are kind of quick. Like, I want to win with them as much as possible. I don't want to waste too many races where they could be winning grade ones. So, they have a quicker grow type, and yeah, I I will chuck them into grade ones quicker, for the most part. Um, and this is also still a very uh, challenging time at the end of the year, because you just have horses in the GWS, and you don't want to take any races away from them, so... Just have to be more conscious about the races we can go ahead and enter. Okay, so this is like smooth sailing. Yeah, that's, that's pretty super smooth sailing, man. I mean, you know what? I, I mean, I've never said he wasn't grade one ready, but... The thing, we could have won that race by so much more if I actually, if the race was longer, like, realistically. Well, that's a pretty dominating grade 3 win there for Lee's Cowboy. There's a lot of power under this guy. There's a lot of power. It's kind of scary, but I like it. <laughs> Perfect race, let's go. So, um... Off of that win, I mean, my goodness. If I can find a suitable grade 2, I'll toss him in there. But if there's another grade 1 I think he can win, I might just chuck him back in that because... Yeah, if I can run... If I remember to run him like that, I think we could win right now. There's two Sterns here. A Stern Bank and a Stern Cap. There's a Stern Cat in the Stern Bank. Ha, 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 ha. Terrible joke. Personal Hill and Personal Image. Is the personal image on the Personal Hill? Ha, ha, ha. I just came up with those on the spot. I can't, I'm not even joking. You. Oh gosh. Um, we're up with Golden Boy in the Paris Mile Cup. GWS Sprint territory. Fortunately, none of our rivals are here. Actually, so we're not supposed to win this race. But the good thing is, us finishing in the top three will be good points for us. So, but we need to win this really. So, Golden Boy, come on, man. This is still your GWS sprint to win. You have the stamina. I really should have been running you in the turf series. That would have made more sense, Eric, with his stamina and speed being where they are. But, you know, sometimes we just don't think about things. We just do them. Sometimes it works, and other times you end up regretting it. Naturally. So. That's where we're at, you know. But. It'll work out. I have faith. I'm not too worried. Somebody's gonna get that win. I don't know who, but one of them will. Or both. Alright, Golden Boy. We need to get this win to here today, buddy. Because uh, we are in a fight right now. To get you your GWS title. Because getting you this title proves you are Hall of Fame worthy. I think you're Hall of Fame worthy. I mean, I think all my horses that have been winning are, but Golden Boy's speed for sure, I think is Hall of Fame worthy. His speed and his ability to run away with the race wins when he does. Yeah, that's pretty Hall of Fame worthy if you ask me. Now, slow down, please. Slow down, slow down, slow down, slow down, slow down, slow down. Thank you. Okay, we can run with him for quite a bit. I think I gotta get him going now. Let's go. Pull away, man. Dude, what is happening? The field is just gobbling us up. Is there any response from Golden Boy? Is there any any response? Any response, my boy? There we are. There we are. Good response, but it's not going to get us the win. It's third place. <laughs> wow. That was rough, man. That was rough. 
That was rough. Me on the spurt. Do they want me to go sooner? Maybe I needed to go sooner. <sighs> That's a bummer. I mean, it still gives him some points at least. So we're, we're eight behind Provident time. We're still in the fight. I mean, it's not over. But, you know, we're, we're having to play catch up, which I don't like doing. Butterfly effect is still clear in the turf. My former opera still up in the dirt. I mean, we're still doing well. Golden Boy, I really want to get that sprint uh, title for him. So I'm just... Uh, it's a race I think we just need to win, but... Not really nothing I can do. Um, that's a turf, so we're not doing that. Really supposed to put him in the World Mile Cup, but, you know, it is what it is. China Mile? That's not good enough, bro. I think I kind of botched this for him. Because the World Sprint's going to count for the dirt, and so is the Classic. Yeah, I definitely botched this for him. Maybe? Or no, wait, maybe I haven't. I'm tripping. Wait, wait. No, we still have, okay. We still have uh, the pair sprint. Thank goodness. I thought I missed the, all the sprint races. I don't care if, like, we need to win this race. What do they mean? I don't, we're in the GWS sprint title hunt. We're in second place. I don't care about an impost. Like, we have to take that race. We need all the points we can get, man. Because I don't know how many races the AI are going to run in. So I can't afford to, like, not run my horse and all the races too like we can't afford that so we have to make sure that we're keeping them active so at least Cowboys two for two right now slow track okay last corner leader stats are looking average so far but um, I'm gonna keep them in the grade threes for now honestly keep them in the grade threes I'm going to do one more grade three, which is the one he's running in next. And then after that, I'll toss him back in a grade one by the end of the year. Um, all right. So I think we're good. Oh, let's see how long we've been going for. Has that almost already been an hour? That's crazy. Doesn't feel like it. I can promise you that. Fairy Singer's up. And uh, favorite in this open. Felt good with this horse. Let's make it happen again. Has it really been an hour? I swear it does not feel like that long. But time kind of eludes me when I'm playing Gallup Bracer. I don't know if that sounds poetic or just ridiculous. Maybe a little bit of both. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's a good start for Fairy Slinger, but we need to drop all the way back to the back, brother. All the way back to the back. All the way back to the back. All the way back to the back. You know, if I was training my horses and they were closers, that would be the marching tune. All the way back to the back. All the way back to the back. <laughs> Oh, gosh. I, I can only imagine how crazy that would drive people if, like, trainers and riders actually had to, like, work out horses to that tune playing through the speakers. <laughs> Guys, that would feel so post-apocalyptic. All the way back to the back. And just hearing it over and over, you know. Uh, that's, like, Fallout, you know, world type of, like, torture. <laughs> Trust me, I would never do that. Don't take me serious. If you thought for a second, oh, would he ever do that? Like, no, of course I wouldn't. I'm on a Looney Tune now. I have common sense. Now, bad start. Terrible start. Terrible start. But, um... This is just an open, so... I would like to think we can kind of, you know, get to the front here. In a decent time. With Barry Singer. And, you know, it's going to make it close, but we're just going to get there at the line to win by about half a length. Thank goodness. That was going to be a little bit embarrassing if I couldn't get that together. 
Good win for Fairy Singer. Gets it done. Rolling on along. Good stuff. That's what we want. Lala Bolero is up in a grade two on the dirt. Nagano. Uh, this takes me back to great Bolero days. Having a chance to win the Nagano Grand Prix, which has become one of my favorites. Just because I do like this race. I like the track. Um, I like the speed. You know, certain dirt tracks feel faster than the others. I feel like Nagano feels really quick. It's really just kind of flat line. It really shows you just how fast your horse can run on a straight surface with no interferences of like a slope or a rough. And, um, of course, Great Bolero has won this race quite a few times. So, Long Live Bolero is a second favorite. We still, they're still not telling me his dirt rating, which is the re most ridiculous thing in the world. Like, everything else is, re is revealed except for his dirt rating. And I've ran him on the dirt six or seven times in a row now. And we've won two of those. Well, Long Live Bolero, you are, um, you're slowly working your way up the ladder. And you win the race that your grandfather won. I certainly hope so. Let's see if we can get it done. Okay. I'm so glad that he adjusted to the dirt well. I was really worried because his turf rating was what it was. Which is great. Then I'm like, oh, if his turf rating is great, what's the likelihood of him also having a great dirt rating, you know? It's pretty uncommon, at least in my original horses, for sure. It's uncommon to find. It's uncommon to find in the game, period. So I figured, like, if his turf rating is great, that means his dirt rating is lower. But I, he's made the transition well. But again, I don't know his dirt rating. He could have a great dirt rating, or at least good. I feel like his dirt rating has to be better than okay. I'd be surprised if he was this good on the dirt and it was just like okay. I feel at least if it was a good, that would make a lot of sense, since he does have dirt in his pedigree. Like, it's not like he's just a turf horse that I've been wanting to run on dirt. Like, he does have dirt in his pedigree. He has both. That's why I think he's probably flexible. But he definitely has dirt, so his rating shouldn't be just, like, something generic, like, okay. I gotta get him on the roll now. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. We gotta kick up right now, buddy. We got to rock and roll. We got to rock and roll. I know it's an early start, but we need that last corner leader. We need it. Oh, did I go too soon? I may have went way too soon, but he's holding off. Oh, hold off. Bolero, come on, bro. I swear he's going to gas right at the line. No, we just got lucky. Oh, I went way too soon. I jumped the gun so hard with that, but, you know, that's a great two win, and it's at the Nagano. <laughs> it wasn't a pretty one, but, I mean, we got a good job. That's what I mean. That race is so fast. It is so fun to run. It's one of my favorite races to run in this game. I just love the quickness coming off of turns three and four, and you're in the stretch, and your your horse is just flying on the dirt, man. No roughs, no slopes, nothing. It's just sh straight flat line speed. And they still give me an S for that spurt. That was awful. I, I could have waited a little bit more. I definitely could have waited. Because his stamina isn't great. So, <laughs> I put him in a vulnerable position. But he was strong enough to hold on. And I will take it. I'm feeling better with him on dirt, for sure. He might I might need to start tossing him into some great ones. You know. Um, Toxic Blonde, she's up in the Victoria. Going for the Sprint Champ title with her. Expected to finish six. That's a little bit shocking. I'm not going to be surprised. I mean, I'm not surprised. I mean, I am surprised. What am I saying? See, it's late. Uh, this, if there's not another race after this one, this will be my last one. But, yeah, I'm tired. It's that point. Speed is almost hitting 80. Doubt it, I doubt it will hit 90. That'd be great. I mean, her stats are so blah. But she's got three great ones to her name. And she's on a three race winning streak. Blues Breeze and Lee's Gold. I don't like the stats of this breeding pair, but I like the horse that they've given me. I need better stats. But Toxic Blonde, she's making a case for herself. Oh, 
She's definitely making a case. Oh, what do you know? Her stablemate, literally, her, her classmate, Tigris of Stone, has the record here. How ironic. Well, Toxic Blonde supposedly doesn't have a chance to win here today. So, let's see how this goes. Oh, that horse bumped me. Are you kidding me? Is that really going to mess us up? Oh, calm down, please. Thank you. Okay. Calm down. You're fine. You're fine. You're fine. Please relax. I mean, what just happened there? We got bumped from a horse that I was... I mean, we were fine. You're absolutely fine. And oh, close race okay and stretch burst. Is that even gonna help us get there? Wow, that was a really cool combination to have happen. But it didn't help us get the win. But you know what? Second place in the race, she was supposed to finish sixth. That was close. That was close for Toxic Blonde. That's a good result though. It's a good result. Ah man. If only that race was a little bit long. I don't know, that that the horse in front was holding strong even after that happened. Like we weren't really still covering ground, so it may have just been a tough race to win, genuinely. But um, not bad at all. So let me get everybody booked into races. Which Bolero, I'm gonna try to run you in a gray one, bud. I think you're ready next time. Osaka Mile. You know what? Of course, this is such a great Bolero thing. I think. I think we could potentially win that. I mean, yeah, it's always a pretty tough race, but not to the point where, like, you should be losing if you have a decent horse. It really depends on the field. Sometimes it's really easy, and sometimes you get some of the really good dirt horse type of fields, so... Yeah, Tossie Blonde, you're, you're, you're doing quite well, in all honesty, so... Princess Cup... Yeah, I mean, you need great ones, so let's go get you a fourth. I'm completely cool with that. Fairy Singer, I mean, wherever they want you is fine. I don't care. Because you still have some time. Set eight double, I think you're good. Please, Cowboy, you should be good. Vivid. And free. Okay, so everybody's good. I think yours is still only S ranked. That is so strange. All right, so we still have a lot of racing left. This is always what happens at the end of the year. It just takes forever to get through. Like, it's such a grindy thing because you're trying to get all the G1s and all the titles and all this stuff. It just... Uh, sometimes I just wish it could go quicker. And, of course, the more horses you have, the longer it takes, obviously. But, you know, I got to have all these horses now to figure out the best ones to use for breeding. I would love to use all of them consistently, but that's not the reality. Some of them are going to have to be replaced, so got to figure out the best ones for that. So we can just have really good lines going. So I just appreciate you guys for the love and support on the channel for the time being. I believe yeah, I will be um, taking a break here, at least in this part uh, of the episode. But this is where I'm shutting it off for my recording session for the night. So, um, like I said, uh, this should be picked back up as a second part of the episode, or there's also a chance that this might just be the episode. It just totally depends once I get to my recording. So, either way, uh, be aware of that. And as always, I thank you guys for the support and the love on the channel. And, um, yeah, we will continue to roll on, and I'm excited to see how we finish out the year. It's a lot going on, and trying to win GWS titles for Golden Boy and butterfly effect i think they both deserve it and i want to get them into the hall of fame so hopefully we can get that done in the next uh part or the next episode so appreciate you guys and we shall roll on all right guys i believe we're back with the last well this episode was 188 
I don't know what I said at the previous recording because I think it's been I think it's been like five days actually since I last played so a little bit of time but we're back into the swing of things with Gout Racer 2004 I have some music in the background I don't know if you guys can hear it. it's just some 80s synth wave which I do like as a genre uh so before I started recording, I was going through all my horses and trying to kind of refinalize in my head what I want to do with everybody. So I'm still chasing titles with Stargazing. Bolero still needs to get going, and he has to get going like now, and maybe he'll start. Moonbee, I still want to get another title, I think. Um, I don't, what title am I going for with Moonbee? So with Moonbee, we're going for the Sprint Champ title. So... Uh, haven't had the best luck. We ran two sprints, second and third, last time out, so that's becoming a little bit harder. Moonbee's honestly achieved enough, and he's won a GWS, so he's fought Hall of Fame bound as we speak. I figure if he doesn't win a sprint by the end of this year, I might retire him. Like, I could keep racing him, but he's five. He's done way more than I wanted. Um... Way more than I, I should say I expected, not more than I wanted. He, I'm glad he did it. He won as much as he did, considering. But I just, I was expecting him to be average with maybe like five wins, maybe ten, or I should say five Grade One wins and like ten wins overall. Uh, he's, I mean, he's one off of ten. We, we have to get him that tenth Grade One. Um, he's done awesome. Butterfly Effect. She's still strong. I want to get a couple more titles with her. Uh, she's still strong enough to continue to run. We really don't need to. Retire her until I clearly think she's on a decline. Golden Boy, this guy, seven wins. He's 14 for 18. Very consistent. Uh, we only have the one title for him, I think, which is Rower Force of the Year. So for Golden Boy, we're going for All Rounder and Sprint Champ, which he just needs to win a 12 furlong race, but he's in the GWS hunt. So once he's out of that or once we have time, we're going to try to put him into a, uh, a uh, 12 furlong. If he does that, I think he'll get all-rounder because he's already won on the dirt before. Formal, I'm going to keep racing for a little bit because um, he's still extremely strong. and uh, He's going to be my best sire that we've currently had, probably above Diamond Plan. So we got to keep running with him. Ruby, we're ignoring for now. You know, she's got two great one wins. I mean, she's, she's won the Louisville Oaks and the Tokyo Derby, so... Um, you know, good for her. Keep working with her. Tigris of Stone, obviously she's three. Everybody, I would say that's four and under. We still have quite a bit to do with them. Like, I'm not even thinking about retirement. But everybody that's five and up, Moonbee, you know, he's getting up there. Uh, Bolero, I mean, I'm, he's just now getting to his peak. So he still has a little bit of time. Stargazing has been on the decline for a while. And I think I still want to try to hit a mile champ title with him, which we should be close. We need, I think, three more. We need three more with Stargazing to give him that Mile Champ title. But I think he's earned the most out of everybody here so far. Like, former Opera AK Secretariat's at 113, but Stargazing has gotten up to 128, which is pretty high for one of my horses. But we've done a lot of really good winning with him. And I think he's got two titles now, right? No, oh, just all-rounder. So, wait, who has two titles? You have one. Moonbee has... I think Moon has two, right? Yeah, Moon has GWS Sprint and Mile Champ. So Moon's got two. Butterfly Effect's only got one, I think. Golden Boy's only got one. Formal Opera's got two right now, and that's about it. So, um, was I looking for a horse? I can't, you know, it is what it is. If it pops back up in my mind, I'll maybe pursue it. Silent Speaker. Why does the game do this? Is anybody else's game like this where, like, your horses pop back up like this, but, like, you can't actually ride them? Indomitable spirit, like, and it's like negotiate, but it's like, oh, I can't actually negotiate. Like, what is the point? That's definitely Tecmo trolling you. Like, look at this cattail, ridden by the same guy. I can't ride either one of them. Well, you know what? They're not doing that good with her either, so. That makes me feel better when I lose horses. If I see the AI aren't doing that well with them, I'm like, okay, so maybe it wasn't so much me. Maybe the horse was just not ideal. Tanaka, I don't know what you're saying, bro, but um, not my concern at the moment, man. So I'm recording this as of 
I think uh, a couple days after the first day of the Galbraith World Cup. So by the time this comes out, there will have been maybe t another one or two more uh, live streams of Galbraith World Cup. But I just want to, of course, commentate on the first one and say that was such a fun time. Uh, obviously, we all didn't do as great as we wanted, but it was a really fun experience. It was awesome kind of having that competition, that friendly competition with you guys. And um, thank you so much for the support and uh, being, you know, uh, participants in the series and uh, yeah it's really fun it turned out you know a lot better than I thought considering I wasn't really organized but um, it was really fun so anyways we're switching gears here fairy singer two-year-old colt is up I can't remember if I bought this horse or somebody gave him to me like I'm, it's been a lot happening in the last five days believe it or not so I'm just my mind's just kind of pfft. no I think I got him yeah I definitely bought him because I like the closer ability I like his distance. I like the ERA at 66 stam, and his only bad stat really is breaking. Like once he's at his peak, all of these should be in the 70s. Maybe 80 will slide in there. So, um, yes, yeah, spurred. Surprised he doesn't have a closer ability, but he's an S-ranked horse. I wanted to give him a shot and see how he would do. So uh, we're gonna roll with him. And here we are. The horses are in the gates. As slow as that meter was, and I still couldn't get it right. That's really bad. <laughs> That's really bad, but... In my defense, I did have only one hand on the controller, and it was my left hand, which... Um, maybe my timing isn't as on point. I'll do better next time. For surely. Okay... Slow down, slow down, slow down, please, slow down. Inside is not free, slow down. Come on, fairy, slow down, bro. Slow down. Okay. Had to slow him down so I can get him on the outside because, like, this was not going to free up like I wanted. I'm going to send him on a swing. We need to see if this guy has speed. Let's move him inside. Okay, I think we got a really good jump. Oh, very nice. All right. Fairy Singer. I mean, it's just an open. He's an S-ranked horse. He should be able to do that, but it's good to see. It's good to see that in the right conditions, against the right competition, he can breeze past that. And it's considering I had to run him like five wide on the outside. I'll take that. Almost six wide, technically. Yeah, so, I mean, if we can win with him like this already, with this sustained growth type, I mean... I'm curious how he'll do at higher competition. I think I'm just going to send him to the first grade one I can, because I really need to see what he's about. It's kind of funny. I didn't really used to do that with my two-year-olds. I'd, I'd only put them in, like, grade ones if I really, really felt they were capable. Now, for the most part, unless I know a horse is going to just be extremely slow developing, if I feel good with the horse after their maiden race, like, I'm like, okay, I need to see you now in a grade two. You know, we need to see what you can actually do. Or a grade one, I should say. Um... So yeah, Storming Oasis. Why does that horse sound familiar? That's not one of my horses, is it? No. Um, but yeah, we're up here with Black Ruby in the Osaka Derby. She's the favorite. I mean, she's been... She's going for Dirt Horse of the Year. Well, not really. That's formal opera's territory. But you know what? She, she can challenge him. I mean, theoretically, I'm still going to keep formal opera for his six-year-old year or however old he's going to be. Ruby's only three. I mean, next year for sure, uh, I'm putting her in the GWS. She'll be ready for that. I mean, I think she can dominate on the dirt if we're winning like this. Granted, granted there's still tougher horses, but she's looking strong on the dirt. So, um, if she had abilities, she would. I mean, she would easily be a double S ranked horse. Like Black Ruby, I, I think in this game is really solid, even more so than Galbracer Three. I don't know about the other games, but she's really solid in here. So, if she had abilities, she, she'd be a double S. Dirt Philly, in my opinion. I initially was like, okay, whatever. You know, when I the game gave her to me, I'm like, I know Black Ruby. I know what she's about. I know she's consistent. I know we'll, you know, win more often than not. But um, she seems... They, they definitely buffed her in this game, which I'm happy for because, again, we've, you know, we've not... We haven't had Dirt Horses, really, in a while in this game. So now we're finally starting to get a couple more. They're starting to pop back up. Phillies and the Colts. So that's fantastic, you know, so we can 
definitely continue to try to just expand our reach as much as possible in both categories. Um, yeah, Ru I mean, she's easy to work with, you know what I mean? And yeah, Black Ruby, she, she's really a solid, solid gal, man. She's not flashy or anything, I think, compared to like maybe other fillies or mares in this game. But um, I mean, I think if you run with her right, she, she's very capable of competing with quite, uh, you know, quite quite a number of challenging fields. She's she would definitely be outclassed, but obviously by a better double S ranked horse or whatever, but. I, I still think if you run her right, she could hold her own, finish in the top five. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I'm kind of excited to breed her with Formal Opera. I, I think with them both legitimately being dirt horses at their core, I think we'll get something awesome between that. Really solid dirt horse, for sure. So, probably by the time I retire Formal Opera, I don't know if I will be retiring Black Ruby yet. It depends. We'll see how she goes. Let's go. The run. The run. No Rebo. But, um... I mean, she's... This is what I mean. She's really strong on the dirt, man. Now, granted, I gotta put her against some tougher competition, but she really kicks away in deep stretch. And, um... Yeah, she's gonna win that by several lengths. Absolutely nobody in sight. Black Ruby gets herself another grade one. And that's the third for our girl. So let's go with Black Ruby. She could get three-year-old Philly of the year. In fact, she's bound to. I'd be surprised. They gave that to somebody else. Six-length winner will take it. And that's her third grade one. Probably should be recording her... Um, wins as well like in my notepad I only have like my actual originals not the game's horses but probably should start putting them over there just so I keep track oh Turner I can't even say shut up at the end of that because I feel like I've said that so many times when he's popped up on the screen Courtly Lark hmm you know this horse keeps popping up and like nobody's acquired him yet I mean I'm going to give Courtley a ride. He's a little bit testy, but that's fine. I mean... <laughs> it's Courtley freaking Lark. And it's a great two. I mean, that's an easy win. X-Factor still here. Second wind. Oh, I really don't need no... I don't need more horses, man. I really don't. Should really chill. What's his grow type? Just normal? Ancient Star... Four-year-old Colt with 72 stamps, sustained growth type. You're not that fast. If you had more speed, you'd be interesting. All right, let's let's see. Chilly mind. Does she keep? She's so average, bro. Like, why is she S ranked? Oh, a turf rail star. Five-year-old mare. Oh, I wish I could have had you. At, I wish you were like three years old. You're actually not bad. Your power rating isn't good, but. Everything else is solid. The only ability is stretch burst, though. I'm kind of over that. I'm just seeing if I can find any gems in here. Alright, so we just ran with Frail Singer, not Free Fear. Frail Singer, or Fairy Singer, excuse me. That was third win. Three for three for Fairy Singer. And I've just been running him in opens. Well, because of his sustained growth type. Okay, let's bump him up in the grade threes now. Even though I. I don't want to break his losing streak, but, I mean, how long can we keep this going? You know, in all honesty, let's bump him up to a grade three. Um, because if he can keep winning like this, I mean, it would be something special to keep his winning streak gro uh, going. There's no good grade ones to really run him in anyways. I can run him in a, a furlong grade two. You know what, that, that should be fine. It's a furlong shorter, but I mean, he should be decent enough to make that happen. So Black Ruby, she's got three grade one wins. Dirt, that's the only thing I'm going to be running with her. So I don't even really need to keep track of her wins. I don't think I'll go for turf rating. Oh, she's turf and dirt good in this game. I forgot. There's actually a lot of growth with Black Ruby, man. 
But I'm going to focus and get this dirt title out of the way. <laughs> so let's just um, hit this hard. What's her distance? 9 to 13. So she's not in the GWF, so I don't, I'm not going to run her in anything. But the music ass is interesting. Actually, no, I'm going to run her in the speak, um, ass because uh, her against the Phillies should give her a pretty solid advantage for sure. I mean, I think she's the strongest gal on the track for the dirt this year, clearly, so. All right, well, we got those two done, and uh, we'll check the foals next month. I want to check them kind of every other month just to see how, how they're progressing up until we get to, obviously, the new year, so. All right, we're up with Courtly Lark. Uh, I've never worked with this horse in this game, and to be honest, I haven't really played with him much in Galbraith 3. He's a horse that I always like. I've always liked, but I just never have wanted to really ride with. And I think it's because I like ch running against Courtly Lark. You know, because, like, the game gets boring to me if I'm just beating out all the horses. Especially if I'm still kind of grinding and getting my own better horses. So, Courtly Lark, I feel like, is always a good horse to keep around to challenge you. Because he, I think he's a good benchmark. You know, you know if your horse can beat Courtly Lark by a couple of lengths and you have a decent horse. And Courtly Lark is no slouch of a horse in this game. He was one of the best in Gallup Racer 3, as far as the, uh, the domestic, you know, um, special grade 1 horses. I don't know if they consider him in the international category, but regardless, Courtly Lark is, he's always been extremely strong, I think, in all the games. You know, he's definitely like a domestic, he's definitely one of the best domestic G1 horses you can get in this game. Um, so like I said, I've always liked keeping him out of my hands because that's a good benchmark for me to set like with him wonder whale like if i see that horse pop up am i, I going to get wonder whale i'm not going to say never but i, I don't really want to because again he's a good benchmark for me and my horses to see you know how close we are so that is intentional some horses i've always liked but just never have played with really i always figured like when i would have a chance to play with them i would but I've really had no desire to, to use them because they've always been a good benchmark for me to test myself and my horses against. And that's just me. You guys know I like a challenge. I mean, I don't want to just win every race. If the game gets to that point, I'll get bored pretty easily. Like, I'll need to start doing something to make it more challenging. And I don't know what's going to make this game more challenging if we get to the point where we eventually just have like super double s ranked horses you know super horses like i have no idea what's going to make the game more challenging at that point i really don't well courtly lark doing courtly lark type things in a grade two i mean if this is a if this was a grade one we're still winning this by more than 10 lanes that's kind of crazy but not crazy because it's courtly lark after all so if anybody's going to do that for a domestic turf horse and a good one. Corley is definitely on that list. It's a really solid win. I'm going to say 11 lengths. 10. Gosh dang it. Well, still, 10 is a big win in itself. So, yeah, I'm, I'll keep an eye out for Corley because that was. Just, that felt as effortless as anything. That felt like a Western Tiger type of run. So, you know. I realize how much I miss Western Tiger just seeing the success of Flying Cowboys, Foles, and then just even riding some of them. I feel that power of Western Tiger still. That's what Corley Lark is. I love a powerful horse, man, that doesn't give me any issues, any headaches, really. But we're moving on to the London Mile. Uh, our girl, Tigress of Stone, three-year-old filly. She's in the hunt, I think, for the... Did we decide to put her in the GWS sprint? No, no way. It's way too late. I think this is just a 8 furlong grade 1 I wanted to put her in. An international. Um, she's got two grade 1 wins at 6 furlongs and 12. So if she wins this at 8, she'll be closer to that all-arounder title than anything. So we're not the favorite, but Cosmic Ruin is. But, I mean, we might as well be co-favorites. Provident Time is here. Tough horse. I mean, obviously, i got to go for the win. Knock off any points I can of anybody in the GWS sprint which Provident Time is. Yeah, you definitely got to knock some points off. Because I think... Who's still going for the sprint? Golden Boy? I don't know if I put Moonbee back in there, but 
Golden Boy for sure, and maybe Stargazing or something like that. I can't remember. Um, but yeah. We gotta make it happen. So Tigris of Stone, her abilities are last corner leader, stretch burst, and grit. The way I have my notepad organized as opposed to my spreadsheets is so much easier for me to keep track of my horses and their grade one wins. How I had it set up before is was in my spreadsheets was probably the most unnecessary setup. It was all beautifully put together, but like I didn't I mean it took me so long to do it and it would always take me so long to update. What I have in here in my simple notepad is like, I mean, it took five minutes, five to ten minutes tops. That spreadsheet took hours to organize properly the way I wanted. So, um, yeah, I'm not going back to that. I mean, don't get me wrong. I do like using spreadsheets and, and I like customizing them to have them look, you know, nice and organized and whatnot. But it is very time consuming sometimes i'm just like you know what i'm not in the mood for this i'm just opening up notepad <laughs> i'm just gonna go ahead and uh, toss some things in there make sure i put in some symbols so i understand you know separation of whatever i'm looking at and it works this is so much easier and then like i can just rotate horses out as i retire them so like i don't have to change boxes and copy and paste and move to a new you know a new spreadsheet like i don't know why i've this, okay, are we running slow? Or is it just me? I mean, I know we're setting mid paces here, but, or mid, you know, mid sectors, but. Gotta go now, Tigris. Gotta go now, my girl. Get the jump. Okay, that wouldn't count as last corner leader, would it? Oh, I overwhipped. I overwhipped twice. Oh, no. Come on, Tigris, fight. Oh, I just I threw the win away again. She's got grit though, but now stretch burst as well. Come on, Tigris, overwhipped again. Ugh. that's ugh. easy win. Easy, easy, easy win. We had the field B. Let me guess, Provident time got us. Nervous soul. Gosh dang it, man. That can I retry that? No, this isn't like Operation 2006. Oh, I totally would would redo that. That's like the second or third blown G1 I feel I've had with Tigris of Stone. It's nothing against her. I'm, she does get discouraged, though, in weird ways. That, that, that has been a little bit tricky, but I, half of them have been my fault. Four more operas up in the Saturn. Uh, ten furlongs? I have no idea why I put them in this race, but I'm assuming for a reason, obviously. We're the favorite, as we should be, so let's just go ahead and get this done. Oh, my goodness. I overwhipped twice in that race. I, what is her heart rating? I'll have to check it because I feel like she doesn't have as much of a whip meter, which is why I'm overwhipping because I'm used to having a little bit more. But I'll double check. I don't want to put my foot in my mouth. But um, I'm, I, I've been doing that with her. That's like my second or third time I've overwhipped with her in a race and it's kind of cost us the race. I don't know what it is. It's only her. I'm not really doing that with anybody else. So Western Tiger has a record here, which is cool. All right, former, we got to drop you back, buddy. We got to drop you back, drop you back, drop you back, drop you back. There we go. All right. Good, sir. Um, so, yeah. Um, I got to figure it out, though, because that's that was an easy grade one win. I'm just toss. I'm just throwing those away, honestly. Okay, we're a little bit off the pace, but it's fine. Yeah, it's bothering me that I'm over whipping on her exclusively more than any of my other horses, which is clearly a reason for that. I just don't know what it is yet. We got a long way to go, my dude. Let's go. Let's move, let's move. Let's move, please. Gotta move. Got a long way to go. Gotta move now, bro. Move, move. There we go. Let's go. Now, will closer activate? No, because I wasn't at first. I don't know. How does it work? It's got a good run. I don't know if we're gonna catch the one. Oh, he's running them down. Wow. Formal opera is insane, bro. 
I mean, it's Secretariat, but it's like, my goodness, they, you know, Tecmo got his dominance right, but they messed up everything else. Like, it doesn't make any sense. It's so confusing. They've definitely nailed his dominance and his strength, his heart, but everything else, the colors, like, the leg type, and I get it. It's like in most of his Triple Crown races, he did start a little bit, I mean, he did start much further. I mean, he pr practically started in the last, but it only lasted for like a quarter of the race, and then the rest of, you know, you know, the other 75% of the race, he was essentially running almost as a front runner, really. Especially once he got clear, so it's like, you know, fantastic win. Um, I didn't want to drop back that far with him, but I wasn't going to push him too hard because I knew like we needed to have enough in the end. And you see, those horses tired out, so me dropping him back that far actually kind of worked. It's not what I wanted to do exactly, but Tigers of Stone, I'm so sorry, my girl. I, I blew that one for us. I really did. Ah, oh, man, that win would have been huge for her. I forgot. She is in this GWS sprint hunt. I mean, she would have won that. I think that would have given her... That would have put her possibly past Golden Boy or close to him. Nervous Soul and Provident Time. They're running away with the sprint, man. We're down by 12 points. Butterfly Effect is still in the lead of the turf, which is awesome. Got to keep that strong. Former Opera is still dominating the dirt, but the sprint... I really wanted that title for Golden Boy, and it's... <laughs> I mean, I want to put him in the Hall of Fame. He's got to win that, but he's past his prime. I may have started too late. I think I said that with him. I really should have focused on the GWS with him in his three-year-old season. Not to say he can't win it now, but... I mean, 81 stamina. Maybe I'm just doing the wrong thing. Him as a five-year-old with 81 stam. Maybe we need to start tossing him into the mile. I mean, the turf. I'll have to run longer distances, but he's got the stamina for it and the power. So, um... Let me check. Tigers of Stone. 59 heart. Okay, your heart's not bad, so why am I over-whipping with you? I do not understand. What's that auto ability? I wonder if it's something that's actually hurting us or not. Yeah, both of those races, we, we should have won. That's two back-to-backs I dropped. Maybe three. Oh, we can't have those anymore. I gotta be more careful with my whipping. I'm just getting, just getting a little distracted. Just gotta stay zoned in with her. Um... World Philly and Mile Turf Cup. Yeah, you know, winning that would be big for her. That would be a huge uh, redemption. Redemption win, so. Formal. Uh, we're just going for... Wasn't that race 12? Is there no Lawn Champ title in this game? Well, that was 10. I was going to say. And, um... Am I going for Lawn Champ with him? No, I'm going for Mid Champ now. Yeah. Because I got all the dirt stuff. There's nothing more to get. So yeah, we're going for mid-champ. So I figured 10 would be easy for him. Okay. Uh, Have I really only been recording this for like a half an hour? Why is this feel like this episode has been longer? There's no way. No, I guess it has been. Oh my goodness, my perception at times is so off. King Cup Autumn. I mean, that's a really easy race for him to win. And you know what? <sighs> See, this is tough. I could run him in the World Classic, but... But... Um, he's already won the GWS Dirt. He's leading right now. I could run him in the Music. And then run him back in the King Cup Autumn. Just to give him some points. Because, I mean, him winning again would be cool, so... I'm going to skip that other G1. I want to get him another title, which is the turf title. That's what he's closest to. Who did I run? Did I book everybody that quick? No, Tigris. Yeah, you're good. I just did formal opera. Excuse me. Oh, yeah. Courtly Lark. I have to look for him. I'm surprised they have him in a grade two. He's definitely grade one ready. I wonder what they're doing. I'm going to keep looking for him, though. I definitely definitely think i mean i should have picked him up i was looking at him so much when he was two years old and i just neglected to so like i really should have just picked him up anyways because i kept i mean you guys remember i kept looking at him i was like nope but riding with him like that that really makes me want to have him join the squad all right let's go ahead and take a look at the foals i like to kind of break up the racing show you guys how the how the little ones are doing which i'm also 
I'm just curious about myself. But let me not speak for you guys. Maybe you don't care how the little ones are doing here at the HRG stables. You guys can be like, oh, we don't care. Five star future here for Galaxy Star, who is Vivid Legend and Chasing Hearts. <laughs> That's awesome. And four star power. You know, I've made some predictions that have been incorrect, but these are two horses I loved a lot for their own reasons. And you guys know, when there are two horses that I love, the parents always, at least when the parents are like that, King Bee and Pink Gemstone, for example, I always excel and do well with their offspring because it's just, I mean, it's like riding with the best attributes of both parents, really, especially if they had a successful, uh, you know, mating session. So, five-star future for her, two-star flex, I'm not worried about that, three-star calm. If she's got a tad bit of a temper, that's not, I mean, that doesn't bother me. But five star future already. That's that's awesome, man. As she, as she should. I mean, she's three star gener. Uh, she's three generations on her mother's side. Artie Crop, Swab Buster, Chasing uh, Hearts. Artie Crop is actually he's proven to be a better long term sire as far as like his grandkids that are racing now compared to like his actual kids. I mean, not taking anything away from Chasing Hearts. I would say she's the exception. Pink Gemstone did great, but you know, Pink Gemstone's foals are doing much better than she was. So I think Artie Crop. He's definitely provided to be a good sire, and the thing I, you know, I got no titles with him. Like, I really could have improved his his value. If he pops up in the market again, I may pick him up because he's so fun to ride. I mean, he's another one of those Galbracer Three Originals that it's one of the best in the game at that point, and he's still strong in this game. So you have that side of the family in Suave Buster with Vivid Legend, who we did get a title for, did put into the Hall of Fame. Um. We got a couple titles with Vivid. I mean, that's fantastic. Real happy. She's looking real solid, is she not? Except for the three stars, but I think she's going to be good. Obviously, Gemstone's proven to be a great broodmare for us so far, and Vivid, I think, will, is proving to be a, a good sire, and he will. But actually, this is the horse I wanted to talk about. Desert Falcon. This guy. What the heck? From Blues Breeze and Fiery Dancer. This is just a random breeding I put together because I knew both of them were extremely fast. But you look at the pedigree as well, third generation on the mother's side, Fiery Dancer comes from Ant B and Sedate Ruler, so the, this horse should be really fast. That's why I thought the name Desert Falcon was extremely fitting. Falcons are some of the fastest birds in the world. Seriously, like, speeds of over 120 miles an hour they can dive down at some time, so... Desert Falcon. I'm actually really excited for him. Initially, I was just, just like, okay, I'm going to throw these two parents together because, again, they have speed. We'll see what happens. And now it's like, oh, Desert Falcon might actually be like a, you know, uh, a, a real sprinting champion. Maybe even stronger than Golden Boy in that regard. I mean, look, this guy is extre he's extremely calm. He's very powerful. Yeah, I'm really impressed with what how he's looking so far. Cleopatra, I mean, pfft. They keep getting better. She's four stars all the way across. She could be five stars before the end of the year. We will check in December. Fine Cowboy and Awesome Autumn. This makes sense. I mean, it's essentially breeding Western Tiger and Awesome Autumn. You're going to get a crazy strong horse. Nobody looks weak, really. Real Happy is maybe a, a, a half a step behind the others I've shown you so far. But my goodness, I mean, like I said, we don't have weak foals anymore. Now, Golden Wings is interesting. Flying Cowboy and Lee's Gold. This is the brother of... Who is this the brother of? Not Stargazing. I'll have to remember. Golden Boy? No, Golden Boy is on his Pegasus and Lee's Gold, I think. So, regardless. Um... Yeah, I mean... Pfft. Speed and, and heart here with this horse. And you see the power and the calm... Future's not that high, which is interesting. He might not be as good as a sibling, but I'm not bothered about that. And then Irish Legend. Irish Legend, I'm kind of surprised. Uh, two star, two three stars, and a four star. So definitely, I would say, the weakest of the bunch so far from Vivid Legend and Irish Fleet, which is surprising because Irish Fleet has really good stats in all of her categories. She's pretty much S, A, and C. And Vivid Legend is Vivid Legend, but I don't know. Maybe they won't work out, but... Really looking forward to Galaxy Star. Looking forward to Real Happy. I think she'll be really fun to work with. I'm really looking forward to riding the last four. Galaxy Star, Real Happy, Desert Falcon, and Cleopatra. I don't see any of them giving me any issues, really. I really don't. I don't see any of these horses giving me an issue. But Irish Legend I am a little bit curious about. But 
I'm not gonna give up on them. So those are the uh, the one year olds. Let's go ahead and look at the three new foals. We have another Vivid Legends and Chasing Hearts, and it's a Colt. So this is the brother of Galaxy Star, and he looks like her a lot. No head markings though. Uh, this is not even which. Of course, I'll change these names at some point. Flying Cowboy and Fiery Dancer. I did another one with her. This one looking really strong. The strongest out of the bunch so far. Two stars and everything except calm. And that's because Fiery Dancer, of course, you know she has an Ant B temper in her. But I'm not bothered. I mean, you look. This is a true three generation horse on both his parents' sides. So father's side again you have Western Tiger Swab Buster Flying Cowboy. Mother's side you have Sedate Ruler Ant B and Fiery Dancer. Whatever his name is going to be, I mean, he should be really solid. I might name him. Because, and I'll give the other two to you guys. I might name this guy. I feel like he could be special. I know how to deal with Fiery Dancer and Ant Beast Temper, so I'm not worried about them. Um, Sorry, just texting. Um, so yeah, uh, this guy should be really fun. And last but not least, Blues Breeze and Awesome Autumn. This Philly. I mean, Awesome Autumn, she's really strong. So t you know, stat wise, Blues Breeze is fast. Um, gutsy as well. I mean, this should be a decent Philly. She really should. So yeah, I mean, I'm looking forward to all the foals. Really, <laughs> looking forward to everybody. Done some different breedings, and to think. Coming next year, we're going to have seven. Five from Diamond Plan and two from General Reason. Pink Gemstone is the only one that didn't conceive. Or four from Diamond Plan and two for General Reason. That's kind of a bummer. But, she, I mean, Pink has given us a decent number of foals so far. So, I'm not worried. Well, you know, hopefully she'll be better next year. Um, but, yeah, well, Diamond Plan and Chasing Hearts. That should be fantastic. Diamond Plan and Lee's Gold should also be fantastic. Reason and Irish Fleet, hit or miss. Reason and Dancer, probably hit or miss but dancers looking like she's giving us strong foals so far diamond planet nozzle awesome autumn should be an absolute tank and diamond planet moon trapper should be interesting so uh yeah i think we'll have two fan three fantastics two hit or misses and one that should be in between Sorry guys, so I was just sending a text message here. Uh, did I schedule races for everybody yet? Um, no, everybody's good, right? I haven't raced with anybody yet. I went to look at the foals before I hopped in. Oh, the. Do you guys remember what I said a couple episodes ago when I was like, this game makes no sense in regards to how many races you have to do well with or whatever to become a horse's main jockey? But I do remember Riviera saying, if you win this, you'll be the main jockey. I do remember that. But, like, that's what I mean. Like, it's random. For certain trainers I have the same relationship with, they make me ride their horse five times before I can get it. So, Corley Lark is ours now. Wow. I wasn't even paying attention, but... uh I just got him at the peak of his, uh, or I got him at the top of his peak, essentially. He's about to be on the decline next year, but his stats are still strong enough for him to be a real problem for a while. Second win, persistency, and tough. Corley Lark, my boy. Do you have any G1s before me? Oh, three already. Okay, that works. Oh, wait. I've been... Okay, that just goes to show you just how out of it I've been lately. I've been riding this guy since the beginning of this year. Why did I feel like that was... Well, ign ignore everything I just said. It took three races to, to acquire him, which that's not bad. We won the Azalea Cup. Easy. Golden Derby. Easier. Then uh, ARES. Easy, easy, easier. Okay, so we actually won three races with them. So, okay, well... <laughs> Let's just keep rolling on then with Corley Lark. Uh, we're going to go ahead and Prince Cup 15. I mean, he has the stamina for that, right? Stam. Well, can you run on the dirt? 
Okay on the dirt. Hmm. I just wonder if, if that World Classic would be worth tossing them in. Probably not. Uh, I don't know what to do with you, dude. Courtly? Prince Cup? You know, I'm going to run him in that. Who else is going to run in that at 15? That's a big win, bro. So let's go ahead and get that. All right. All right. Well, I cannot believe I'm talking like I that was my first race with that fool. <laughs> it's like, no, it was my third race with him, and I won the previous two. Like, Eric, you dolt. That's why the game gave him to you. Even though it wouldn't also surprise me if I got a horse like him off of one win and others I've had to struggle with. So that's my gal racer. That that definitely happens. Rob us a day double in this great three. Not the favorite. Long growth tight for her, right? Very long. I like. I just hope she's worth it. She's got closer. And she's not actually a deep, deep closer. So that's not bad. I mean that means this we'll have to cover less ground to tap into that. Her stats don't look great, though. I mean, she's got 40s and 50s except for an 88 response. That's so RNG. That's as RNG as RNG gets, honestly. <laughs> so I'm hoping by the time she's really six years old, you got to look at that chart in the bottom right. She's not going to get to her best until she's basically six. That's four years from now. <laughs> Literally, four years in this game. By that time, I'm hoping the 50s are high 70s, almost 80s. And I'm hoping the 40s are mid-60s. If that's the case, I can win a lot with her. For an S-ranked horse, we can do some damage. She is S-ranked, right? Not double S. Or is she double S? Maybe she is double S. I'll have to check. Anyways. She's a little bit unsettled here in the gates, but... If she gets out well enough, we'll hold her back and we're going to give her... Get her off this nasty part of the track called the rough, which we want no parts of this. I'm gonna move you over here, darling. And then we're gonna move you up a little bit. And uh, I wanna keep you right here and centered. Oh, yes. I do have random uh, times when I just like to talk in an accent. I don't know if that's bad or not. But it's really because I appreciate. Just some, you know, different things about different cultures, for sure. I mean, I appreciate a little bit about a lot of cultures, honestly. I think if you really take the time to try to learn about other cultures genuinely, like, an, with an open mind, I think you can see, you can possibly find one or two things within that culture that you might resonate with. Not all the time, but I think if you open your mind, which means, like, you kind of let go of any restrictions or limiting thoughts you've had, I think you'd be surprised at some things you resonate with in a different culture you know i just feel like americans we just we talk boring you know i feel like everybody else in the world just their, their accents and their language it just sounds better but english is just so cliche closer nice all right sedate devil i mean did that closer do anything or are we, are we gonna pull away i'm on sedate pull away please oh we're not supposed to win this i'm tripping <laughs> we're actually not supposed to win this and she's actually pulling away and shutting the seven down no she lost a head-to-head, -head, even though she really did it, and she's going to come in second. That's not a bad effort. We weren't supposed to win that race, but, like, she didn't even lose the head-to-head -head yet. She was just upset that the horse was still there. So, they devil, you goofy goober. Like, you could have won the race. The horse was not going to beat you. Like, she was literally going to win, and then she just got discouraged because the seven horse got a little bit closer to her. And then, you know, she got discouraged, and we finished in second, but... Almost a perfect race. I'm not complaining, but it's like we really could have won that. <laughs> it's fine. We we're supposed to win it anyways. Free fear. Two year affiliate I decided to acquire were the favorite in today's liquor S. Is she a dirt horse? Like legitimately. Oh, she's dirt and turf. Okay. So her stamina is blah blah blah. Her power is blah 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 blah. She only has stretch bursts. But it's very clear that I liked her for her speed, which means she's fast, she's responsive, she has decent heart, and most importantly, she can run on turf or dirt. But I can't recall if the game gave her to me if I actually bought her. Either way, I liked her enough. I mean, stamina is not what I want, of course. 
in the breeding plan. But again, we can work around that with the strongest sire with like a 99, you know, stamina rating. We can bump that fold up to a mid 70, and the mid 70s are working really well for me. Like I don't think our horses, butterfly effect, stargazing. Um, Tigers of Stone, Golden Boy, any of those horses that have like 70s and 80s stamina, they're not, the stamina is not becoming an issue in the races unless I start them way too soon, which has not really happened. So, you know, getting my horses to mid 70s stamina in here is like actually working out pretty well. Of course, I want 90s because I really want to be able to do the long races and be able to run competitively and win by quite a margin when we can. But, um,. But yeah, like, mid-70 stamina is working. So, like, if I take a horse like her, which at her peak, her stamina should actually hit... Oh, no, this is a different horse. Free fear. Um, at her peak, her stamina should hit mid-60s. So that's not bad. You breed mid-60s with a 90 or higher stam. I mean, you should get something between 70 and 80, which, I, just like I said, that's all I need for a horse. If everything else is super stacked, I mean, we can win a lot obviously so and I did think about doing something but I don't know if this would actually work like let's say when I get to a point where I feel like the game is becoming too easy and I obviously want to challenge would it be worth me like okay only keeping my my strongest horses um, and then allowing my kind of B-ranked horses or however you want to refer to them if I just allowed them to just kind of like just be lost like if i decided to just lose with them just so the ai could end up racing with them back in the market you know like i wonder if that would be worth a challenge in the game because like i mean i can't recall coming across any of my horses and them being like a pain in my butt through the season that's never happened yet that's because i haven't had horses at that level yet that I've lost at least. Most of them didn't turn out to actually be good horses overall. So I'm very curious if I let a really strong horse go intentionally, will we have a chance to run against that horse? Because to me, that's the only way I could continue to make the game challenging, really. Now that wasn't a great race from Free Fear. And that stamina definitely came in to kick us in the butt. So I might let her go. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> but like, I wonder if I could get away with doing that. You know, if I felt confident enough that I had strong enough horses to run against my own horses, that would be the goal. Just to start putting stronger horses into the game. Once I get to a point where I feel like winning is too easy, like it's going to hit that point, right? At some level, once we get those horses, we're like just beating the strongest AI horses in this game. It's just not going to be that much of a challenge. Like, I don't really want I don't care about winning by 20 lanes. That doesn't do anything for me. I, I like winning challenging races against very challenging horses. So once that gets easy. There's got to be a way to make it more competitive. That's just an idea. I'm not saying I'm going to do it. I'm not even saying it's a good idea. I'm just saying if it was possible and if it could work, is that a way I could keep this game challenging for a long time, even after we've gotten to the point where the regular AI horses are a joke? I don't know. Guys, please let me know that in the comment section below. Pair Sprint. Golden Boy. I'm trying to get him that Sprint Champ title. It's been a struggle, though. We've dropped two of the last three Sprints, I think. It's... But like I said, I'm probably focusing on the wrong category, to be honest. He's got the stamina. He should be running in the Terp series. Why I've been running him in the sprints? It's probably because he was extremely fast as a two-year-old and halfway of his three-year-old season. But his speed has tapered down a lot. Now he's back to kind of just a, you know, an above-average horse speed in most essence. But, like... His speed is only 69, and it's getting lower. So, yes, it's definitely going to be harder to win these five and six furlong races. Like I like I said, next year will probably be his last year. So, I'm, I need to toss him into the GWS turf. And, of course, the whole point of that is for him to win it. So, I guess I got to make sure, like, there's no other horse I want to put in that race. Or put in that series. Because, you know, this is all about getting Golden Boy... A GWS title so he can go into the Hall of Fame. I think it'd be a shame if he didn't because he was so fast. Like, really. But, you know, if it's not going to be practical for us to do that with him, I may just have to pass on it, honestly. Okay, now we got to get going now. I hope I didn't go too early, but we'll see. Okay, we're battling with the five on the inside. He's still holding out. Come on, bounce back, golden boy. Nope, six has got his beat. 
Yeah, I really should be running him in the mile. I just he just he doesn't have the speed. I mean he's dropping now, but it's because those two other horses are clearly just gapping us in the rest of the field. And he finishes fourth. That's Yeah, it's mm. It's my fault though. I mean that's the third sprinting race we've lost with him. I I'm not supposed to be running him at these distances. Thank goodness we got a top five goal, but yep. I'm gonna have to switch gears with him now, switch to the mile distances, so eight and up for him. He definitely needs the extra two furlongs for sure. With 81 stam and 69 speed. I gotta run him longer, not shorter. Black Ruby, she's up in another G1. Not the favorite. Who's the favorite? Wild Charm. Hmm. I don't really know much about Wild Charm, so why are you the favorite? Oh, that's Wild Canary. I was like, that's not her. Two wilds in this field. Oh, okay, yeah, you're actually kind of dangerous. And you're a gray? What the f... You have no abilities, but you're... Be I mean, you're gorgeous. 96 speed? Okay, you're, you're, you're extremely fast. 67 stamina. Like, you know, you have decent lungs to run most of the long distances. Not the longest, but most of them. Your power's not that great, though. I'm not a huge fan of that. But the toughness, response, and braking for a front runner. I mean, I guess that's really all she needs. Wild Charm. I'm going to have to keep an eye out for her. We kind of got our hands full today, then. It's Black Ruby. But I got faith in Ruby. She's getting stronger, so it's not like she's on the decline. So I just got to run her right, and I think we have a chance. But Wild Charm. Beautiful gray. So it'd be awesome to acquire her. All right. Well... Suppose after this race or whatever, this will be the last one of this part. part, part? I was going to say part and section of uh, this episode, but you know, combining words as always. Former opera with the record here from last year. Black Ruby's been on a roll. Let's see if she can continue that roll here. Getting a good start is crucial. Nine furlongs. And we're off. And the grade one Spica. Stakes. I don't know how they want that to be pronounced. I will say the Spica. So it's a good start here for Black Ruby. Who are we looking out for? Wild Charm. Where are you? She's the five, right? Oh, she's up there. Yep. So keeping an eye on Wild Charm. I mean, she is a front runner, so I think we have to get the jump on her. If I mistime it, then her 96 speed is going to take off with us. I mean, Ruby's not slow. And she's getting faster. Like, Ruby will hit mid-80s speed, I think, by her peak. So Ruby is not slow by any means. But you know what? We're going to keep her honest. Ruby can run with her. We're going to keep Wild Charm honest here. We're going to keep her very honest. Stay right on the outside of her hip. Keep her in check. Keep her in check. Keep her in check. Keep her in check. Keep the pressure on her. Max stem. Ruby's feeling pretty good. We got a seven. Okay, no Rebo. That's fine. Okay, Ruby, come on. Here we go. Okay, let's kick. Good break. Come on, Ruby. Oh, wow. Wild Charm is literally just going to storm past us, huh? Well, as Ruby fights back, there's nothing I can do. She's not giving up. She still has a chance. Have a furlong left to go, but nah. Wild Charm, she's too fast. Ruby's hanging in there, though. Second best. That's the best I can do, man. 96 speed is hard to be compete with. <laughs> now, if Wild Charm had the same speed as us, we're winning that race, for sure. She sets the record. We were off by three and a half lengths. <laughs> what did I just say, people? Fast horse. I, I haven't paid attention to Wild Charm much, but it's clearly a very fast gal, so I'm not upset at that. Formal Opera, speaking of them. What's up in the music, S? This is for mid-champ title. Or, no. This is a this is the GWS dirt race I wanted to put him in. Because, you know, him winning again would be great. His competition, Discreet Dancer's here. Discreet Dancer apparently doesn't have a chance, and of course he doesn't. So, um... Yeah, we win this. I mean, I think I should we should be safe with him in the GWS dirt. I'll keep an eye on it still throughout the year, but I may not have to run him again in another GWS dirt race. I can start focusing on those 10 furlong turf races to try to get him that mid-champ title, so... Yeah, winning this should um, put us in a good spot with him. We should have a nice cushion. Especially if Discreet Dancer ends up finishing, like, worse than second. That'll help us out a lot. Because, again, that's the closest horse to us, I think. By four points. He's, he's only four points off. But, again, if we win this, we would go up to 36. And then I think he would go up to... 
He would go up to 28 or 30. I forgot how many points are awarded in second place, but he'll go up to 28 or 30 if he finishes in second. Anything lower than second, though, I could care less. Anything lower than second actually is fantastic, so where is he? Just let him go by me, okay. My bad. I don't want to drop you back this far. I mean, not that much, bro. Because, I mean, good thing about Formal, he can run anywhere and just like saving some ground with him. Okay, you want to go faster, I get it. You're fine. This is cool. Okay, slow down, though. We're kind of flying here. We're not flying. It looked like it. We weren't in any reds, but... If you stay green most of the race, I mean, that's a faster pace than normal. Like, if you just get all blues, which I think I made an error about that in one of the older episodes, or the older, um, not older episodes. Older races and one in this video. This, this uh, part of the recording. I think I said something about blue being mid, but I keep forgetting blue is slow in this game. Green is mid. Alright, let's roll. Let's roll, man. There's a scrape. Okay, discreet is... You're not going to block me, discreet. Okay, we're getting past discreet. Well, we're, we're running with discreet. There's closer. Oh, pull away, formal. Pull away. Discreet dancer's going to try to run with you. You know what? Fair play. I see why this horse is second. Discreet dancer's not a pushover. Because we really have to grind here with formal opera. But, I mean, I'm not worried at all because it's formal opera. Now, three horses still coming. Actually, that's good. Yes, that's what we needed. That's exactly what we needed, I think. Unless that three horse has the same amount of points as discreet dancer, that's what I wanted. The GWS win for Formal Opera puts them up to 36, and hopefully that keeps the competition at least 10 points behind. 10 points behind is a decent cushion, and we set the record only because there was no record. <laughs> but yeah, kudos to Discreet Dancer. I was hoping he was going to be blocked because I wanted him to like gain no points, but beggars can also be chooses, I suppose. So, um. Bad race with free fear. I'm not really sure about that, girl. Her stamina is not great. So, updated standings. Nothing's really changed for the GWS sprint yet. We're nine points behind Provident Time. I mean, we're not out of it with Golden Boy, but we gotta. Uh, I think there's only two sprints left, so I mean, we have to hit those. And the turf butterfly effect. She's still two points behind Dancing Monster because she just hasn't had a chance to race yet. She was leading. And former opera now we are 12 points ahead. See, that's what I wanted. That was a big race for us because discreet dancer only got four points. So, like I said, I mean, see, so yeah, if it was 13 points, we'd be fine. But like, if discreet dancer, if we're not racing and he wins, he could end up tying us, and they may give him first place based off of that last victory. So, like. I think I still have to run formal and run more, and I don't really want to. It's kind of annoying, but um, we'll go ahead and stop this part of the recording here. I'll set everybody's races up, and we'll continue to roll on. And this our guys are back, and um, everybody's all booked up. So I decided what I'm going to do for this GWS Dirt title. Like, former opera doesn't need it, but, I mean, we're already leading. It would just kind of be a waste of time to, like, actually have done those races and to... um not still try to win him that title for the second time so to help him with discreet dancer who is 12 points behind i decided to put golden boy in the west um the world mile sprint or the world sprint i should say because there was nothing else for him um until mid-november which is a uh, miler race so we're not running him in the sprints after this dirt race uh, he'll be in the blue, though, so anything to take away from Discreet Dancer, any way, anything to mess up, because I don't know which race he's going to be in, so I had to run in it. So we put Golden Boy in the um, W Sprint, and then I put Black Ruby in the uh, the World CC on the Dirt, which that actually makes sense for her because she is going for a Dirt Champ title, and there's also a chance Discreet Dancer could potentially be in this race. I don't know which one he's in yet. In fact, let's see. Oh, we're not there yet, but once we get there to week four, we'll be able to see which race he's in. Either way, I have two of my horses. I have two times to race against him and to try to keep him. I have two chances that he may be in one of those two races. And, of course, what we want to do is just beat him in the points. However, that, that, that can be done. I'm not going to cheat, of course, but, you know, that's, I'm just trying to block him. You keep formal opera clear. If that's the case, then... 
Uh, I'm still going to run him in another dirt race, which will be the Independence. Uh, it's a GWS, and it's a normal one, too. So I'm curious if the discreet answer will actually be there. He might only run in this these World Classics. So um, if we can beat him, if he's running in the next two weeks, then it makes our life a lot easier for uh, Secretariat, basically. Okay. Lala Bolero is up in the Osaka Mile and the favorite. The Great Bolero pedigree, I think, is finally starting to show up. I think I put the tack on him literally at the right time. Look at that. A red figure there for the temper. Well, Bolero, it's about time you start winning, bro. You're about to be six years old. You're getting up there. I'm only going to have three more years with you if you actually turn out to be as good as your grandfather, which hasn't hit there yet, but we're on a two-race winning streak. This could be the start of it. Like I said, this is what happened with Great Bolero, if you guys remember. I think maybe he started winning a couple months earlier than this, but, like, he didn't start winning consistently until he was five. Five and a half, really. He was an old... He was much older than the rest of the field, but that's his growth type. That's what Lonla Bolero has, and I'm just hoping that we can start stringing together dirt, like, you know, grade ones, because one thing Lonla Bolero can do that Great Bolero didn't do is get a dirt... Um... No, I think Great Bolero got a dirt champ title. I'm sure he did. But he never won the GWS dirt. Now, do I think Long Live Bolero is good enough to win a GWS dirt? <sighs> B ranked currently? No. But Great Bolero... What I'm trying to say is Great Bolero didn't get a dirt title. He did get dirt champ. Maybe? Or maybe not. I thought he got dirt champ. He definitely should have. But I swear he got no titles. No, he definitely got a title. A title or two. I just I couldn't put him into the Hall of Fame because I didn't win the GWS. That's what it was. He definitely would have been in the Hall of Fame. But I never won a GWS with him. That was the issue. I think he at least got two titles. But he either got Horse of the Year or Dirt Champ or both. I just can't remember which one. I think Dirt Champ. Because that's only five grade ones or six grade ones on the dirt. So, yeah. So, Long Live Bolero, you know, he could end up equaling that. But then... You know, I would obviously like to try to get him into the Hall of Fame if he if he deserves to be a Hall of Fame horse. I mean, you know, obviously I would have wished for Great Bolero to have been in there, but if Long Live Bolero can find a way to obviously get his Dirt Champ title and potentially try to maybe run a GWS next year, I'm all for it, man. I'm all for it. We gotta go right now, my guy. We gotta go. Last corner leader should activate. As soon as we get to the top of the stretch here, he's got a nice long run. There it is. This is the Osaka Mile, bro. Is Long Live Bolero showing us some shades of his grandfather, Great Bolero? The 13 is coming. This race is yours, my guy. Made it close. He <laughs> made it really close. But Long Live Bolero, my friends. <laughs> That's his first grade one win on the dirt, I think. <laughs> Oh, better late than never, huh? That's three wins in a row. I think we're finally coming into form with him. Literally, I swear it's like as soon as I really put the tack on him, he started to click, man. That's awesome. Him and Great Bolero, they're so fun to ride in the stretch, even if they tire out at the end, because Great Bolero did win a couple of races like that. They're still so fun to ride on the dirt because they fly as soon as they hit that corner, man. As soon as they hit turn four, they're gone. Really. And then, yeah, like I said, sometimes they tire out towards the line, but it's like as soon as they hit that initial spurt on the stretch, it's such a rush, man. It's so fun. Because it's like, it's really just a quick burst. Like, they don't have the stamina to keep that up for a long period of time, but it's definitely a quick burst. And, um... Yeah, that's it's just yeah, it's really uh, fun to work with. So, well, it's it's a good race for us and Long Live Bolero. I think that's his first Grade One win on the dirt. Let's go. And the game's still not telling me his dirt rating. I'd be, I would be shocked if they actually told me now because they haven't told me for, you know, about five and a half of his years. Me winning a Grade One would that really make them tell me? I don't believe it. Moonbee's up in this 7 for long Aquarius, because I think we're going for Sprint Champ with him, and we are. 
Moon is still, I think, decently fast. Fairy Time is here. Gonna be tough to beat. What's the speed? 73, I mean, yeah, he's falling off. I mean, he's been falling off. Mad Chatter speed is 73, so we're even ground. Fairy Time is 84. I guess 80, yeah, Fairy Time's definitely got a speed jump on us, but... And heart. Very gutsy, so... Gonna be a tough horse to beat today, I think. As a closer, I'm hoping he gets stuck in traffic. So, Moonbee, we just gotta... We gotta take advantage of the front pace and... Make sure we time our spurt properly because we don't have the stamina. But seven furlongs. I mean, I, I think this is fine for him. For Moon, I mean, he did get the mile champ title, which means he can run a mile. So I think that pedigree has a lot to do with it because the stats are nothing special. But like he performs like he's a much stronger horse. He performs like like a horse with much better stats. So I feel like his pedigree has really contributed to that. Honestly. And King B and Gemstone both. Very strong families on both sides, so. Perfect start for Moon. Let's go. And we're off with Moon B in the Aquarius. Trying to get this guy um, you know, sprint. Sprint champ title. I already won him his GWS last year, so I don't have to worry about that anymore. You know, I do feel like it's weird that I won the GWS Sprint with him and not the GWS Mile, but I guess that makes more sense. He was extremely... I don't, I don't know if he was as fast as Golden Boy. I don't feel like he was, but he, you know... He was just really strong in the stretch, man. He really was. Umbi, if you don't have... If you had last corner leader, bro, it'd be a wrap. Two sevens. We're not the favorite here, so if we end up making this happen... Moon, you're fine, dude. Relax. Acting like we're overworking them. Dude, you're fine. Come on, Moon. Stay strong, my boy. This is what I mean, people. This is what I mean. Moon B performs like such a, a much better horse than his stats. Say, you know, he, he he's at level-wise. Look at all that stamina. Not even close. Not even close. Destroyed the favorite. Who destroyed that field even more? And that's what I mean. He does not perform like his stats say he should. He's definitely performing like a sh extremely strong double S horse, which of course I'm happy about. Like he's exceeded my expectations. Like as soon as I get him this third title, I mean I think that's a good note to send Moonbi out on. We're not supposed to win that race. Favorite finish in fifth. Couldn't even catch up. Almost a perfect race. Like, Moonbee is... Moonbee's the truth, man. That's his 10th grade 1 victory as well. 10th. If I'm not mistaken. It's crazy, man. It's, like, literally crazy. Moonbee bringing us the points, too. Let's go check out Moon. Oh, Mr. Moon, that was your 10th grade 1 victory. Look at his stats, people. His stats are nothing crazy. They really aren't. Of course, he's been on the decline for the last year, but even at the height of his prime, his stats weren't insane. I mean, I think his heart was 90. I can't remember if his speed hit 90, but yeah, he was very strong in, like, you know, the speed, heart, breaking categories, but everything else was super mid, really. So the fact that he's able to win like that against those type of horses still, and I can dial it in with him, this guy is still, it's amazing. It's, and I, like I said, I completely contributed, I contribute a lot of it to the pedigree. And you, like I said, you look at both sides, you have Desert Diver and Ant B on King B side, and you have Arctic Crop and Night Breeze on the other. And he's got a really solid pedigree for sure. He's got Arctic Crop and Desert Diver as grandfathers, <laughs> you know? And being Night Breeze's mothers, grandmothers, and then King being Gemstone, his parents. Yeah, I, I definitely think he performs more like he's a desert diver or an Arctic crop. I don't think he's performing like King B. He's he's exceeded what his own father has done. And mother, he's exceeded both of his parents by a huge, by a pretty big margin, almost huge. He's performing more like Arctic crop or desert diver, hundred percent. 
And that's why I'm going to look at him. I don't care what his stats say. This is like our desert diver and our arctic crop and moonbeam. That's freaking awesome, man. They want him in the mile champ cup. I mean, I wish, but like we're not going. We already have the mile champ title. We need sprints with you, buddy. We need sprints, moon. We need seven and under. Seven and under. Uh, might be it for you, bud. I mean, I'm trying to sprint. Well, who else is going to run that, right? There's our last race of the year with Moon. I'll put him at, I think, four G1 wins at six furlongs, I think. Golden Boy, we still haven't ran with yet. Formal. Oh, no, we did run with Golden Boy. No. What am I thinking about? Uh, City Devil, you're good. Oh. Uh, what's his face? I decided I'm going to let Free Fear go. Like, I didn't like how I felt with her, even though she's still growing. We we're supposed to win that race, and she did finish second in the other one, but I had second thoughts. I mean, she is another dirt horse, though, but like 41 power, I don't like that. Oh, I'm not a fan. I really don't. I kind of want to let her go, but Let's see if she can handle a grade three and sweep that away, because she's only she's only raced twice. Supposed to finish fifth in her first race to finish second. I really didn't like how that grade one turned out. Definitely thought we should have won that. And I just felt like she just she just kinda lacked she lacked something in the closing furlong that I didn't really like. I don't feel like we just got beat. I feel like she kinda quit. I mean she did quit. That was a race where, you know, she got discouraged because the horse was close, even though she was winning. Like I don't you guys know how I am about my horses. That that's not the hearts and the guts I want to see. Yeah, Lola Bolero was his first grade one. He's almost hitting double digits for wins. He's on a streak. But, wow, that bumped him up to S rank. I mean, <laughs> that's only one grade one win. Are they telling me something? Is Lola Bolero a true late bloomer like his great grandfather? Or his grandfather, excuse me. His great grandfather's buying a club. Ah, uh, see, the mother, if the mother's side of this pedigree was just as deep, I'd imagine he'd be way better than he is now. He would have to be. And that's no shade to his father's side. I mean, he's got Bionic Club and Scabbit as great-grandparents. Great Bolero and Nightbreeze as grandparents. Nice Prince was okay. Swab Buster was really strong. I just think the lack of depth on his mother's side maybe is... Contributed. And then also Night Breeze and Onyx Prince. And then Onyx Prince didn't achieve what I wanted him to. I think that's kind of where it messed up. I think a stronger Sire would have definitely helped him to have been stronger earlier. But, I mean, his stats aren't bad at this point. They're average. I would say slightly above average. So, you know. And look, look at the dirt rating, question mark. This game is stupid. It really is. No, I'm not running him on the turf. Like, I really think he performs better on the dirt. So, um, problem is, there's no more dirt. No, Tokyo Cup. I'm going to give that to him. I could give that to Black Ruby, but no, he needs it more. I mean, I prefer for him to have, like, two chances to win dirt grade one you know, before the end of the year, but there's nothing else for me to... Actually, you know what? Masaka Sprint? What is your... 76? I mean, he's fast enough. I'm going to toss him in that Osaka Sprint. Especially with the stamina not being great. He'll be in the green, but I think if he can win something, this is the race for him to win. We can get him a second grade one just that quick. And then we can get the ball rolling to that Dirt Champ title. And then see if he's capable to run the GWS next year. I think by the time we're just beginning or we're midway through, he'll just start to be on the decline. And to me, I'm not worried about that because as long as he's strong at that point, we can still win even as he just starts to you know, kind of lose his peak, so, I mean, his stamina and his heart, I don't know if they'll hit 70, I'd be pretty impressed, because then he would actually be a much more, he'd be a, a much stronger horse than Great Bolero was statistically, they're pretty similar, but he sure as heck is an Onyx Prince in regards to his stats, it may have really just taken him a long time to get going, so... We put uh, Moon again in the China Sprint, and I think we're good with everybody else, right? Double checking. 
We haven't raced with Toxic Blonde in a while, and Free Fear, I guess I decided to keep her going. Courtly Lark, of course we do have, so, um, we haven't raced with Stargazing, Butterfly Effect, uh, in a while, and Toxic Blonde, and then of course the two-year-olds, but, yeah, we haven't raced with the other three in quite a bit of time here. Oh, let me double check. Is there any horses that might jump out at me? But I'm not seeing. That's delight. Hmm. Close your ability. Can you activate that running as a proceeder? I like to grow tight. The stamina I'm not crazy about. Really fast, but nah, bro. Pass, man. Cosmic Fear, have you been here all the time? Hmm, your stamina will hit 70, so breaking, heart will. Power, I don't, I need, I need strong horses, man. I'm not really, a horse has a bad power rating. They're going to have to be freaking amazing to make up for it. I don't want my horses to have bad power ratings anymore because I'm realizing how much that's helping me in so many of our horses' success. Like, a, all of them, for the most part, are pretty powerful. As far as like my actual created horses, so that's working for me. I want to keep that up. I don't know, weak silly bones around here. We are strong. The boys and the gals are strong. That is the culture and the tribe I would represent. We are all strong together. Not on some Sesame Street type of weirdness, but like genuinely. We are all strong. There's no excuse not to be. Well, Fairy Singer's up in this gray, too. I like Fairy Singer. I mean, I felt good with him last time out, so... You know, he's got a decent growth type. Uh, we'll see how he turns out. I mean, I have no no expectations with him, but I'm curious. He was a horse I was like, okay, you know. I, I want to see if he could turn out to actually be... better than what his ranking says. Because sometimes that happens. Sometimes that, that definitely happens. For me. Not often, but every blue moon, like I always say, I get lucky with breeding, you know, an average horse to a great horse and we get a superstar. And every so often, you know, you take a S ranked or A ranked horse and you really turn them into a double S. It happens. It's not impossible in this game. So, you know. Naturally, I'm curious if Fairy Singer could maybe be that horse. You know? Like, I think Scabbit in this game is an S, but if you run Scabbit right in all the wrong, in all the right races and you run her accordingly, I mean, Scabbit really can be a double S, uh, you know, long-term horse in this game. Oh, crap. I didn't move as much. Move over! Well, we got Spurt. Okay, I think we should be able to... That may have actually helped us get a really big catapult. Oh, no. We're not there yet. Come on, Fairy. Push. Get up there. Uh, we may have just gotten up there at the line. I mean, we were supposed to finish second. We'll hit our goal. But, we. I mean, that was an easy race to win, and we didn't. Oh, uh, dear. Puffy won that one. I blew that. <laughs> I moved. O I wanted to move all the way over. Like I know I could have snuck in the gap between the last horse and then the second to last horse on the inside but, or the outside, but I just wanted free room. I just didn't move over enough. Damn, that's uh, it's a bummer. Well, I like I, I like Fairy Fear. I like how he runs on the outside. I mean, he flies. As long as he's got the space, he flies. So I like how that feels. And you guys know, if I feel good with the horse, I like to keep them around because they end up being great horses down the line with their offspring. Uh, Moonbeam, prime example of that. Stargazing, you know, but they end up becoming really fun horses to ride with in this game. Like, they feel like they're created horses and they're not just regular in-game created horses, you know. So, uh, Princess Cup here for Toxic Blondes. Aunt B's not the favorite. Cattail is? She did beat us that one race, didn't she? So she might actually be... I mean, Harris has still not achieved as much with her as he should have. 
But I think she does have three grade ones, so maybe she's actually rolling. You see, this is what I mean. Like, okay, I'm not mad I lost Cattail. I'm not, I was disappointed, but it, it's Galbracer. I can't do anything, and I'm not going to reload saves. So, um, you know, looking at Cattail, MB's second favorite. So, I mean, definitely a tough feel for Toxic, but this is what I was saying earlier in the episode. Like, if I just have, once I get to the point where winning against all the best AI horses gets boring... Then, like, what if I intentionally lose a horse, like in this case, my cattail, and then she ends up going into the game, obviously, we're running with her, she's only three years old now, and she ends up being a challenging horse that we struggle with, or that, you know, we have really good races with. That's a way I think I could keep this game challenging. Of course, we'd have to pick and choose which horses to let go, but I think that'd be worth it at a certain point. You know, I mean, technically, that's a breeding I would pick. That way, nobody else feels like, you know, I'm taking their horse away from them. I would definitely be a breeding pair, I, I would say, I would pick for my own horses that I'm probably breeding. Like, you know, I like in this game, I think we all have our own own pairs that we probably like the best, you know, the best. Or we have one sire that we really like to breed with a lot. Or maybe a couple of brew mares we really like. Whatever the case. I'll use one of those groupings. Like, for example, a second vivid legend and chasing hearts fall like you know we, we, that would be a horse i would be like okay that's fine because first one i'm sure will be great so these are toxic blonde stats she's still fast very fast and she hasn't peaked yet so she's still developing but she'll peak midway through next year so um now's the time to stack uh some great one wins with her and get her closer to a title um i actually thought she was kind of going to be you know a fluke but We've been in good form with her. I think it's just a little bit rough on the edges the first couple of races, but she's kicking in for us, so no complaints here. Well, Toxic Blondes, let's see what you can do. Let's see what she can do. So let's see if Cattail is really the truth. Now, if she wins, and it's like, okay. That is a method of of um, increased difficulty I could kind of make on my own for this game. But we're still quite a ways off for that. But I'm just thinking about it. So it encourages me to stay motivated long term. Because if I knew once we get super horses, winning in this game is just going to be really just, you know, it's simple and easy. Then that would get boring to an extent. But then again, like, is that kind of what we're doing in Gallup Racer 3? Like, I think except for a couple of horses, we pr we win, like, 80% of the time in that game, on average. But, like, I still haven't won all the titles I wanted to win. We still haven't won all the races I wanted to win. I still feel like there's a lot to achieve in this game. Yeah, what are we doing here, Toxic? Oh, no. Toxic. No, 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 no. Today is not the day for this. Uh, just as I try to hype her up, she goes ballistics. Hot. Well, there, there, there is a toxicity coming out of Toxic Blind, and now she's upset that she's running too hard. Like, oh my goodness. Wow. Well, Toxic Blind certainly living up to her name. Which means we know for sure we're not winning. I'm curious if Cattail is actually going to win. Ugh. I was worried about that temper, and it, it seemed like it wasn't too bad, and her recent outings, but there, there it is, striking up. Toxic, my goodness. This was a race we really could have won. Somebody's going to get blocked, not my problem. Cattail's going for the lead. I see her up there, top right. Yeah, I think Cattail's got them. Hmm, Cattail might be the real deal. Which, again, that's a good sign. That means I can do that later at endgame. Oh, toxic. Oh, toxic. Oh, toxic. I think that was her first really, really bad race, so I'm going to give her a pass. Yeah, Katel won that by two lengths. Clear of Ant B. Okay, she's the real deal. Oh, gosh. Well, this is, this is becoming... This relationship with Toxic Blonde is literally becoming exactly what the name is. At first, I was like... I was weary, and then I was excited. 
And then I was kind of bummed out about her in the beginning of her career. And then we won, you know, started doing well for a couple of races. She's got two grade ones for crying out loud. No, she's got three grade ones. Yeah, Toxic Blonde is three grade ones, mind you. Okay, so like, she, she's not a slouch. I know three is minimum, but like she has some. Like some horses may struggle to win grade one sometimes. Just depending on just their stats and how they are. But you know, she's got three. And she's only three years old, right? So she still has plenty of time. She, I can still race her another two years. So three could easily turn into 15 or whatever, you know, if we really tried. <sighs> like... I mean, like I said, it's been weary, it's been excited, it's been bummed, it's been, okay, she's won three grade ones, she's actually doing really well, and now I'm back to bummed again. Like, the relationship is literally toxic. Oh, jeez. Well, we're moving on with Vivid Gemstone here. Second favorite in this seven furlong international meet at Paris. The favorite is Warm Carol. Fair enough. Um, this is obviously from Vivid Legend and Pink Gemstone. So, second favorite today. It's not terrible. 78 speed, 57 stam, 68 field. That's all we know. 7 to 11, I'm guessing, is going to be the distance for this horse. 7 to 10, 7 to 11. 12, I'd be surprised. Because, just because Gemstone didn't have, like, great stamina. But I think it, it might, I think it's C. C or B. Yeah, I actually like how the gray and the pink look, like, for his bandages. I, if you guys remember from earlier in this episode or the previous one, but I'm like, I can't tell what it is, but that's kind of what I like about it. Like, as you're seeing it in motion, it makes it look different, which is kind of the goal with this horse. I mean, he looks exactly like his dad, Vivid Legend. Same head marking and everything. <laughs> so let's see if you are Vivid Legend's son for realsies. I mean, I know you should be gutsy like your mother. She, she was one of our hardest fighters ever. Public never quite had faith in her. I think I finally just killed the annoying gnat that's been flying in my room, I swear, for like a week. Like, he just pops up at the most inopportune times, and just by the time I see him, I can't even react to kill him. Or at least to dispose of him properly. There's a, rev a revolution for a secret vivid gemstone, is what I'm going to call him, because his name was going to be Secret Gemstone, I think. <laughs> I'm going for the record. Just go, 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 go. Well, this is uh, Vivid Gemstone's first Grade 1 victory at 7 furlongs. Let's freaking go. I asked him. I'm like, are you Vivid Legend's son? And that is a Vivid Legend win. So, yes. That's already been clear after day one. <laughs> Let's go, my boy. Vivid Gemstone gets the Deneb Stakes win with the Red Shadow Roll. Oh, yes. I'm loving it. So that said, I guess we're going for that Sprint Champ title first, and as we should, he's got 78 speed, which I think is getting stronger, so yeah. And he should have a sustained growth type at least. So there should be a lot of that to come from Vivid Gemstone. And keep in mind, he's only two years out, and it's a perfect race for our boy. Definitely Vivid Legend's son. He, he rose to the challenge and answered with authority. With confidence. With grace. And you know what? I'm like, that's what we like to see. Well, let's freaking go. So, stargazing, I still have not raced with you yet. Bolero's going to be up soon. Moonbee, I already got you covered. Butterfly, I haven't raced with you. Golden Boy, either Formal's good. Ruby's still good. Tigris. Toxic. Toxic, what on earth? Her temper is only 40. Why did she lose it? I mean, I swear Fiery Dancer's temper and Beast's temper is like 20. And I never had her do that in a race. 
So Toxic Blonde with 40 temper, which is, don't get me wrong, it's not good, but my goodness. I, I mean, you would have thought she had like 15 temper. That's really concerning. I slowed her down just a tad bit. Her feel isn't great neither, so yeah, getting her dialed in is really important. Like, I can't be messing with her position at all. Like, I gotta get her settled quickly and just leave her there and make sure I'm very focused on keeping her exactly where she wants to be. But I can't do too much. I just have to put her in a good spot, which really, I, I should probably just be putting her mid-pack. I, I think I'm trying to drop her back too much. And it's kind of hurting her. But her temper is still uh, definitely a concern. Like, for sure. Definitely a concern. So I'm going to keep an eye on that, because I'm not a fan of that. You guys know that. Mild Champ Cup. Um, Who else is going for a mild title? I mean, Toxic Blonde is actively going for that title. Okay, I think she's the only one going for it. Yeah, okay. I don't know why I thought somebody else was going for that. Cool. So yeah, this is your race. Redeem yourself. Get your fourth grade one. I don't think you're a bad horse. But, man, it's like, you. she's really finicky. She's got to be exactly where she wants. And if she's not, she will not be happy. And she showed us that in that last race. It's our way of saying, you have to put me in the spot I want to be in. If not, I will not be a happy girl. And it's like, you know what? Yeah, I don't really want to deal with that too much. Fairy Singer, should I put you in a grade one? Have you ran one yet? Not yet. Okay. I was trying to keep him on a winning streak. That that was the goal. Okay. Well, let's run this. I mean, you're two years old. You've been doing well. I think a grade one is the minimum you can do. Everybody else is good, I think. A bit of a gemstone already up to A rank. Cool. 51 temper, not bad. I feel like half of these are just going to remain question marks for most of his career, because that's just how the game treats me. Your distance is 7 to question mark, but you have 78 speed, so you definitely are, are a sprinter right now. Um, I'm curious how he would do on the dirt, but I don't really want to run him on dirt. I'm gonna run you seven again. We need wins with it because I don't know what I want to do at the end of the at the end of the month. All right, so we got gosh, we got a lot of races here. Well, halfway through this particular recording session, I need to go ahead and take a break, and then I'll be right back. But this will be a quick one. Alright guys, so big um big day here today in week four. So our game is in the World Mile. Bar Butterfly Effect is in the World Turf Cup. Golden Boys in the World Sprint. Black Ruby's in the World CC. Thinkers of Stone is in the World Phillies and Mares Cup, basically. And Sedate Doubles in the World JF. I didn't realize everybody except for Courtly Lark is basically running in the world. Cup races, I guess I should say. And Courtly Lark is um, going after that sprinter. I mean that um, 15 furlong. Yeah, I like his stats a lot. Really good power, good speed, good braking. Temper is not great, but 92 heart shouldn't give us too many issues. I had no reason to really hesitate on this horse. I think I was just being weird, which that is, that is me in my core, weird. So. Me being myself, but like more myself than usual, I should say. Does that make sense? Like I'm already weird, but that's being weirder than weird. So like, just look at Courtly Lark, knowing that, you know, you like keeping him as a benchmark, but 
I've been trying out a lot more horses lately, obviously, in these episodes that I haven't played with. So it's like, yeah, I should have gotten him. And he's up here. And we're the favorite. As we should be. Rainy Rhythm may give us a run for our money. Some speakers here as well. Yeah, there's no... I mean... I think I was just in the point where I'm like, okay, we have too many horses, I can't just keep getting more. And ironically, what's happened? I've gotten more horses than I had at that point, of course. Yeah, me saying I don't want any more at that point, it's like it didn't happen, I actually downgraded, but then I went back up. I downgraded for like three months, two or three months, and then we were right back to where we were. But, um, all the horses I have, man, they're special, and I want to see what they all can do, that's the thing. The exception to maybe Free Fear, like and Toxic Blonde, which I still think is a good horse, but I just don't know if that temper is going to give us a problem. All the other horses, which is 10+, plus, they're all fun to work with. Courtly Relax, bro, you're fine. You know what I mean? Like, they're all fun to work with, so that's why I don't want to get rid of anybody. Usually I don't mind retiring horses when, like, they're just not doing as well, or, you know, they're just a little bit kind of hit and run, hit and miss to run with, but... We don't really have horses like that anymore, so I'm not in a mind space of wanting to retire them too soon. Now, Courtly's supposed to be leading, but, like, whoever this is... Flying Glow, could you relax, bro? Like, I need to be in front. My goodness, don't make me run harder than we need to. You're not winning this race. I mean, look, the field is spread out by at least, what, almost 20 lengths at this point. I would say a good 15, maybe? 15 could turn into 20, depending on if we get more separated, but... I mean, anything 15 and up, I mean, my goodness, like, can we bunch a little bit closer? No. But good thing is Courtly has high 70 stam, so we could run at this pace, be fine. I don't think we'll be bothered, but I don't want him running too hard. I mean, I will save ground when I have to, you No. Know? Need to run harder than you should, there's nothing to prove in that regards. Winning the race and winning by a decent margin matters, and... Managing your stamina, I think, is extremely important to that, obviously, as it should be. Well, if he doesn't just sound like I'm just gibberishing. Is that even a word? Gibberishing? <laughs> Can you say that? Like, instead of gibberish, I'm gibberishing? Is that a word? That's not an offensive word, is it? Jeez, I hope not. That'd be awkward. Oh, Courtly, please relax, bro. Please relax. Like, you're, you're ahead by, you know, more than three lengths. You're fine. <laughs> like how much faster do you want to run okay you know what whatever that's fine you know I, I don't want to make my horses upset so if he's like well, I want to go faster and he's giving me a chance to, to kind of do that with him then I'll, I'll work with him I mean I had to make sure that he wasn't going to bolt on me that first time so I so I, I needed to actually wait. I, I wanted to make sure he wasn't that type of horse. And clearly he's not. But yeah, I had to make sure <laughs> on that first little, oh, I'm not happy run. I wanted to make sure we were, um, you know, he wasn't going to bolt and get go into the red. And he didn't. So that's why I could respond to him the second time. Because if a horse does that, then it's like I'm already looking at them funny. And he destroys that field as he should. Yeah, Corley Lark is super strong. I, I I wonder if he's... They may have buffed him in this game. Maybe he's actually a really solid, you know, special uh, international double S horse. Was he in that category? I swear I, I bought him in the domestic, but I, don't, I can't remember. I can't remember if, he was dom if he's domestic or international in this game. I mean, I think he should be international, but, you know. Yeah, Flying, flying Low came in third. Okay, not bad, but, like, we still could have been a lot closer. Yeah, 12 length winner. Say less. Say less. That's what Courtly Lark does. It's just awesome to now be doing that with him. Okay, the World Cup races start. We have like seven or eight of them. So, buckle in, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen. So, eight doubles up. World JF Cup. She's a long shot because, well, she's still developing. She's nowhere near a peak yet. Like, she's two, she's not supposed to peak at least until she's five and a half. And you see her stats. Which means, beating any horses in this race shows she is going to be pretty darn solid. 
when she does hit her peak. I think she'll be worth it. I won't start running her in grade ones probably till late three, early four year old season because like really wins to me are more important earlier in a late growth type horse's career. G1s are important, but like you need to be winning those. Run in one every blue moon, do well in it, but like until they can win those back to back, I want wins earlier. Like it to me it helps my horses develop, it helps them get stronger, which means once we transition to grade ones, you know, we're right in rhythm. So, um Yeah, like unless she's able to win these which I don't think she's capable of yet because of her stats. Then, um, yeah, we uh, just need to just really obviously stick to gray twos and under with her. Probably gray threes. Gray threes and opens because, I mean, her stats are not great right now. 50s and 40s except for the 88 response. She certainly is not anywhere close to a decent horse statistically, so... If I want to stack wins, I probably really just need to stick to opens and then the occasional grade three, but just stick to opens until I feel like they're getting too easy and then start running her in grade threes. Like, obviously, I want her to start winning grade ones sooner, but her stats are not putting her in a position to do that. Like, if she had better stats at this point, different story with the same growth type, but no, her stats do need time to develop, so, you know, winning grade ones off the bat is just not going to happen with her. She's got a good run here. Oh, Rebo. But had to get going. They're going to give us closer or no? I mean, she's the long shot. She's got plenty of stamina left to go. Let's just see how she finishes, man. She is dropping, but I mean, she's finishing. She's still got plenty of stamina left to go. She's not going to finish the last, and that's what I want to see in a horse that's supposed to... That's projected to be the long shot. I want to see how they fight. I want to make sure they can beat a couple horses out. It was bunched up at the end. She beats three. But, you know, her stats are bad, except for the response again. So that's that's good. I can build on that. We'll take that and go to open open races. Stack those up, mixing grade threes. Golden Boy's up in the world sprint. He's 10th, and Discreet Dancer is not here, which tells me he's in that 10 furlong race, which is perfect. Because guess who we're running in that 10 furlong race? Black Ruby, who has been awesome on the dirt. So we can actually give Discreet Dancer a really hard time. So I think it works out that he's not in this race. Because I think we might struggle with Golden Boy. I'm not doubting him, but... Um, Scarlet Jewels here, Roman Asset, Holy Reception. I mean, yeah, it's a, you know, some decent dirt horses in this field, as they should be. But, I mean, Golden Boy, uh, yeah, that's the thing. If his speed was still, like, 78 instead of 68, he, he would, I mean, we would definitely be the favorite or top three. Lack of speed hurts, but, like I said, I was, I wanted to make sure we had two horses in both races that Discreet Dancer could have been in. So, if he wasn't in this race, I figure he's going to be in the 10 for a long race, hopefully. If he's not in that race, then he would have been in this one. But I think I said I was going to check, but too late, because we're already here. <laughs> We'll see eventually. I'd be shocked if he wasn't in that 10 furlong um, dirt race. I'd be really shocked. But it's happened. It's happened before. It's how Chasing Hearts won her GWS title. Like, whoever we were competing against, they just dropped out. They stopped racing in the important races, and we pulled away. <laughs> like they could have raced, I think, in one or two more, and they just weren't. And they just basically gave us the win with Chasing Hearts. They really did. So, it wouldn't catch me by surprise if that were to happen again with, like, Discreet Dancer. Like, what if he's just not running in the dirt GWS anymore for the rest of the year? It's like, okay, the game is just giving me titles. I don't know how I feel about that. I mean, am I complaining? No, but, I mean, you guys know me. I like to earn my wins, earn my titles. We're looking good with Golden Boy, though. Damn, no two, triple sevens, but we're looking really good. Okay, let's go, let's go. Work, 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 work. Oh, I got started way too late. Got started way too late, man. Yep. Because we would have beaten that six off of turn four. Golden Boy really could have stayed motivated to stay in front. He's still doing well. Okay, it's still going to be a top four finish for Golden Boy. That's 
It's not bad, man. I mean, <laughs> I think he earns points for that. I think. <laughs> I think he earns points for that in the GW West Dirt Series. <laughs> Only reception sets the record. My gosh. That's a crazy name for a fast horse. Holy reception. But uh, we're supposed to finish 10th. We finish 4th. That's solid, man. The top three finished where they were supposed to, and we beat out the rest of the field. So, Golden Boy, we weren't supposed to win that. That was just purely a blocking. That was a blockade in case Discreet Dancer decided to come that route. So, Golden Boy did well. No Discreet Dancer, and he actually finished in the money. Good, sir. We're moving on. It's the World Mile Cup stargazing. Not the favorite. I don't think we need to be. Provident Times here. Fresh Devil. Going to be tough to beat. Quiet Sounds. I mean, yeah. It's it's a tough World Mile Cup, as, as it should be. But I think if we run this race right with stargazing, bide our time, save his stamina, this is our race to win. 71 Stam. I mean, it's definitely dropping, but he's still strong. Going for that Mile Champ title. This is eight furlongs. This would be his fourth or fifth I don't know his fourth or fifth eight furlong win so gonna make sure I get him in front from Western Tiger out of Lee's gold I mean we should be able to win this because if I was running with Western Tiger we would win this I think stargazing is very capable of that even when he's not the favorite Timing his spurt is really the main thing like as long as I get him out in front at a good time with at least two lanes between him and second place we hit last corner leader. He's usually too hard to catch. It's usually too hard to catch, basically. So, it's, that's really the way you win with him, man. You just got to give him a couple length jump on the rest of the field by the time you hit turn four. As long as you do that cleanly and clearly. Last corner leader, he is strong enough to stay in front. So, just going to make sure I manage his stamina properly. I want to make sure I can run him the way I need to without him tiring unnecessarily, but 71 stam is still decent. We shouldn't have too many issues with that. And I'm just going to keep him right here, keep him on the outside, because I do not want to be boxed in too wide. That is no fun. This horse is going to come over top. It's fine. We get a 7. That's always good. I mean, we're expected to finish 4th, so that, to me, means a win. I don't care what the game says. Like, I know my horses. I know what we're capable of. This is your race, my dude. Is Max Stam? We got one seven. I feel like we're we're feeling good here. Just gonna just get his attention a bit more. It's two sevens. We kick into a revolution. It's a wrap. It's a wrap. Get him going. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. No rebo. That's fine. We gotta hit last corner leader. Come on, Star. Come on, Star. Oh, they're not gonna give that to me, are they? Wow. He he absolutely got turned on the on the the final turn. He's still fighting. Dude, this race is crazy. I think the 10 may have gotten us. Oh, that's a heck of an effort, man. I got him going a tad bit too late. That was our race to win. If we would have hit last corner leader, I'm positive we would have pulled away. Quiet Sound just holds on to get us. Yep. Yep, that's definitely me. Oh, man. Our race to win, for sure. Because Quiet Sound wouldn't have been able to catch us if we would have gotten a, a solid half of a length jump or a half a length to a length jump ahead of um, who we were running against. That, that, that was ours, man. And look who's not here. So he missed this entire week. That is shocking. I don't know what, what the health is. Maybe he's in the gray, but he's not here. So this is just a race for Black Ruby to win, to stack her dirt portfolio and... Um, I mean, this will put her on the board for the GWS Dirt. She's not catching formal opera, but we'll put her up here. Yeah, no discreet answer. I swear, if he doesn't show up in any of the remaining Dirt GWSs, it's like, did the AI just give up at certain points? <laughs> so you know who's the favorite? Firm Ruby. Not Black Ruby. Probably not even related. All right. Let's rock and roll. Well, I mean, just going to try to win this. Which I was going to try to do anyways, but because Discreet Dancer is not here, it's like, well, there's no pressure. Like, we can do however we need to do here. Trying to beat him would have been more pressure, but I would have also given him a headache at the same time. I would have been stubborn about it. Which is unusual for me, but 
Yeah, I mean, I, I want to make sure Formal Opera secures a second to GWS Dirt. I don't even know if it matters. Maybe it does in the game. I don't know if that really goes into a like into account when it comes to breeding. Like, do they keep track of like you winning the same title multiple times? I wonder. Or do they only keep track of like you winning a title for the first time? I would have to imagine they Tecmo built some sort of mechanic where it, it tracks your horse winning multiple GWS titles, the same DB, the same titles. I should say. It must have some sort of algorithm to like add you know, increased value to your horse for breeding. I would have to think. Like, if you win, let's say, you know, let, let's say you win the GWS turf four times. I'd have to imagine that it, it takes that into account for breeding. Like, there's definitely a hidden mechanic that we just can't see visibly that um, helps improve your horse's breeding, just profile and rec you know, record even better. So, um... So yeah, I mean, you know, my goal wasn't to win the GWS again this year, but it's like all the good dirt races that he needs for a dirt title, or a um, I mean, all the, I mean, we started him in there because we were still going for I think that dirt champ title, and then um, yeah, there was really nothing else I could do, so I just wanted to kind of keep him ahead, but um. Hey, Ruby, let's go, girl. Okay, she got a good jump. Can I pull away? Was it too late? Ah. She's gonna finish fourth. It's not bad. I mean, you know, like I said, I was gonna go for the win, but... I may have started a tad bit too late because she was able to stay ahead for about half a length in the field caught her. But fast raise, Red Ambition sets the record. Double S on the spurt. Still think I could have started maybe a tad bit sooner. I feel like I kind of could have did that with both of those races. But, I mean, both of them are races we weren't really supposed to win, so I'm not mad. Tigers of Stone. Now, this is something we got to win. This is redemption time for her because I've dropped the last two. The World Philly and Marikoff, she is the favorite. Second favorite is Divine Steel, General Pleasure. I'm not worried about them. So this is our redemption time. The rest of the field is kind of sloppy. I'm not going to lie. So, uh, yeah, we're going to go ahead and get this win with her. Now, I have to make sure she stays in the fight. Her heart's not terrible. Her temper's fine. But two races. I've overwhipped. Yeah, her heart rating's not great, though. Like, if that was 15 or 20 points higher, I probably wouldn't be overwhipping. So it probably is affecting me, even though it's not a... It's not a terrible heart rating, but considering her other stats, yeah, it's not balancing out. Like, usually when you have a horse with these stats, they have a good heart rating as well, so you can, you know, use the whip quite a bit. But I actually have to kind of be time timely with her. That's the only reason we've lost the last two, just over whipping. So I take control of that here, and she should be fine. There's no bigger stage to get redemption to prove everybody that, you know, you are who you truly are. That is a great horse. The mess-ups have been me. The mess-ups have been Jockey Air. It's not the horse. Well, yeah, you know, her heart rating is not great. Like, she does just randomly get discouraged. Like, I don't know if she's just a bit spoiled in that regard. <laughs> Because to me, I guess a horse in this game, a, uh, a non-spoiled horse is one with a really good heart rating, and I think the ones with bad heart ratings are spoiled. You know, they only want to run a certain way, they only want to win without fighting. Yeah. I mean, granted, I think maybe sometimes a spoiled whatever can still also really want to win, sure. But, you know, for the sake of this game, just roll with me. Yeah, what are we doing here? Like, aren't we all just running so slow and then we all wanted to speed up at like 89 miles an hour? Like, my goodness, can we figure it out? Now, is the inside open? Not really. Okay, I kind of want to slot her. I want to get her on the outside. Yeah. I do not want to be boxed in. Oh, no, 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 no. We are not doing that with her. Now, these two I'm keeping on the outside, which I really could be running behind a leader, but I just don't want to run her that heavy. This is fine. Yep. 
Oh yeah, this is our race to win, no doubt, bro. I'm not worried about these horses at all. No overwhipping, Eric. Be steady. Be steady with Miss Tigris. I really like her. Um, I really liked the 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 mass decision with the blue and white stripes and the pink shadow roll. I think it, I think it really fits her. Okay, she's clear, bro. She's clear. Tigris is clear. No revolution. Just watch the whip meter, Eric. There we go. Nice and easy. Nice and easy. See, this is what I was supposed to be doing with her the last two races. I just, you know, was not really paying attention with her whip meter. I was going way too crazy. And look at that. What a, what a redemption. What a redemption arc for Tigris of Stone. You know, she loses those two races, which were lower than the quality and the prestige of this race. And she comes back as she dominates in this race to show you... That that really is the type of racehorse she is. She's a world filly and mare turf cup that could get her. I think that could end up giving her three year old title, right? If I'm not mistaken, at least for you know or an award and potentially horse of the year. I mean, I feel like that would go to formal opera, but I don't know. It could go to formal opera. I could go to Tigris of Stone. Uh. One, another one of our horses, Black Ruby. I mean, any one of them could get Horse of the Year. They've all been doing exceptionally well. Ten lengths. She sets the record. Um, actually, I just wanted to um, say, even though I, was, I would love to, to rewatch that, but I want to get through these races here because, wow. <sighs> Ten length winner in the World Philly in uh, Mare Cup. I don't think I've ever won. I don't think I've won this race by that many lengths with a created horse. Like that. That does. Like that feels very different. <laughs> but yeah, that's the type of horse she is. Like I said the last couple of races, jockey error. <laughs> that is Tigris of Stone. <laughs> Damn, that's. Is that flying cowboy and gemstone? That was what? Well, butterfly effect is up. Our stable mate. And, um, she's in the World Turf Cup. She's going 12. I mean, should I be worried about anybody here? I was going to say Cosmic Fog and Wild Expert. Both of them. I know they're not the favorites, but I just completely missed even Link. Okay, tough field, tough field, alright, we gotta, yeah, all these races are pretty tough, man, but I mean, Butterfly Effect, she's not, like, her bar has slightly dropped, but she's barely changed, barely changed, like, she's still very capable, and I mean, we're gonna be leading, so I'm controlling this race, I have to. I think if we run her out of position, things will not work. Because last corner leader and solo, those two things together have helped her win so much in her career. And I want to keep that going. I don't know who's going to be running with us at the front, though. That's worrisome. Yeah, I have no idea who's going to be running with us. But you know what? I'm not thinking about it. We just have to go to the lead, establish it. And if anybody's trying to challenge us, we're just going to have to shut it down. i got to keep her in front. She's got the stamina still to do it. Okay, not a great break, but you know, we gotta push, we gotta push here, my girl, we gotta push, we gotta push. We have to establish the boundaries here. Nobody puts a head past butterfly effect, okay? Unfortunately, I didn't have to slow her down that much because, like I said, she's very capable of running lane this turner. Sorry. Actually, I'm not sorry, that's Reyes, my bad. I don't know if I had beef with you, so I'm genuinely sorry. If I was Turner, I would not be sorry. Because Turner's Turner talks crap about me every chance he gets. He's a, he's the most two-faced character in this game. For me. I think AIs act differently differently in all of our games, but Turner's like 100 percent two-faced. You know, one minute he's saying, Oh, great ride, and you know, hey, could you, you know, help me out here and you know, great guy, all this bull crap. And then in the next minute. He's insulting you, saying, oh, you only write on favorites now. Ha ha ha. Oh. And then other just stupid stuff about trying to improve your jockey skill. Like, 
when is the last time Turner's even won a championship in our playthrough? I feel like he only won maybe within years one to five. At the latest, years one to ten. Like he has fallen off the map. And she gets last. I mean, she gets solo. We've been this much in the zone. I have totally forgot about the race for like half of it. I'm not even gonna lie to you because I'm thinking about just Turner and just how obnoxiously annoying he is for no good reason. No, we're not gonna push her too heavy, but we're gonna make sure she understands the urgency. Oh, dude, we're clear. We're clear. We're clear. Oh, we're clear. Last corner leader. Give it to us. Let's go. Oh, we're clear, bro. We are the fourth favorite. Finish strong. Finish strong. Finish strong. Finish strong. Yeah. Let's go, baby. That's what I'm talking about, man. That's what I'm talking about. Wish I would have been able to do that. Uh, the other two that we kind of dropped, but... It's another 12 for a long race. She should be the long champ. That might be a long champ title, or close to it. That might be it, though, guys. 12 for a long winner is Butterfly Effect. This, I've been saying this since she was two. She's four years old. I'm like, this girl's the real deal. I've been saying it's Butterfly Effect is the real deal. Okay? That's why I named her that. I knew she would be special. That song. The... The symbolism and meaning of the song. Very, very uh, personal for me. Fast Bert Lone Runner. Yeah, she really just likes to just run by herself and just remind everybody that she is the strongest and the best gal out there. It's a big win. That's a big win on a big stage. I mean, two big wins on the big stage. Really, when you, both of the girls. Tigris of Stone wins the World Philly and Mare Cup. And Butterfly Wet Effect, excuse me, wins the World Turf Cup. Both of the gals won huge races, man. Huge races. Let's freaking go. Let's freaking go. So let's check the GWS updated standings. Tigris of Stone got herself onto the board for the sprint. She got six points. So good for her. Golden Boy, he's... Provident Times running away with that one. We, we botched it with Golden Boy this year. But like I said, I shouldn't have been running him in the sprint. We should have been chasing the turf. I, it's kind of a wasted year, really. I mean, he's done well, but definitely could have. We lost quite a number of races with him this year because I was just putting him in sprints. He's just not fast enough for them anymore. So that's that. The turf series, Butterfly Effect. Forgot that being a GWS race that puts her 10 points ahead. This will be her first GWS title, guys. Winning this is going to put her into the Hall of Fame, and I think she deserves it. We have former opera. Uh, still ahead, because the Sri Dancer just has probably given up. Let's go. There it is. Long Champ title, baby. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Hall of Fame bound for sure. And she could still win Horse of the Year as well. But she hasn't won. She could still win two more titles. She could win this GWS turf. She could maybe win Horse of the Year. <laughs> Butterfly Effect could really turn into be like the best created horse I've actually ever had. It's kind of crazy. It's kind of crazy. Oh, wow. Um, well, yeah, Star Game has been on a bit of a decline. I mean, just we haven't been able to snag a win in a couple races, but he's been against tough competition, but he's finishing above his odds for the most part, except for that spring mile. Um,. Yeah, what else am I still chasing with you, realistically? I'd get you a GWS, bro. I've been trying, but we haven't been winning. <laughs> I mean, he's past his prime, so... Uh, I wish Stargazing could go into the Hall of Fame. I feel like he's been extremely strong. He's earned a lot. He's had really solid grade one wins, but... It's not looking good. Um... 
I mean, the China Miles for the sprint. I don't know who else I'm really going to run in that. Because, I mean, we are going for that Mile Champ title with him and Toxic Bond. Mm, I'd feel more confident putting Stargazing in this one. Like, Toxic, I, eh, I'm holding out. Oh, she's already in a race. That's fine. Um, Tigris. That's her third grade one, and they still only have her at S. That's hilarious. Toxic Blonde was double S. For one. That's crazy. Uh, who am I looking for? Who won their fourth? I thought somebody won their fourth grade one. Am I bugging? That was Butterfly Effects 11th. Huh. Who did I think? Uh, yeah. I guess I'm... Okay, whatever. I was Tigris of Stone's third. <sighs> so, we're going for Mile Champ with her still. Um... Yeah, I see like... Okay, there's an eight in week four in November. Or... What month? Oh, that was October. Oh, never mind. I mean, Butterfly Effect... You know what? Let me get Butterfly Effect in her race first. We want to make sure she finish out, finishes out by winning the China Cup. She'll be in the blue. She wins this. She is your um, year 32 GW, GWS Turf Champion. She could also get Horse of the Year and other awards. Like Butterfly Effect is at a heck of a season, guys, really. Let's go ahead and look at the last 10 for our Butterfly Effect. So... Starting from last year, she had a third, a sixth in the World Turf Cup. So that's a big bounce back. Sixth to first by huge margins. She won the Winter Jam GP last year. She had a grade two and a grade one. She dropped the second cup. And she's been on a winning streak since June. Winning the Red Flowers, the Diamond Cup, the Lead Oaks, and the World Turf. I mean, winning the Diamond Cup and the World Turf in the same season. I mean, that, that's big. And look at her odds of both of those races. Not first. In fact, the betting public, like, secretly hates Butterfly Effect. I think she's so gracious, they just, they can't help but be envious because the betting public keeps betting against us and we keep winning with her when we're not supposed to, usually. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? They're not even giving us favoritism and we're winning with her. Game has no faith in my girl. That's crazy, man. That's super crazy. From Western Tiger and Irish Fleet. That's why I don't understand why, like, Vivid Legend and Irish Fleet's foal is looking sketch. Like, this is what Irish Fleet can give you with a really strong sire. So, the game is telling me, like, she's the problem sometimes. Like, nah, bro. Golden Boy. It's been rough with you. I mean, that was a good result for that um, sprint, but only seven grade ones. Kind of, kind of, he is dropping off quite fast, but like I said, I've been running him in sprints. I guarantee you he'd be doing better in longer events, which the Continental, was I going to run him in that? No, I thought I was going to do that with Formal Opera. Formal, where are you? Wait, I passed you. Well, he's already in the King Cup. I was definitely saving that Continental, I think, for him. Or the Independence, but like... I don't... I mean, Continental's not in the GWS Terps, so running this for him would be pointless. Yeah, what did I put Butterfly Effect in? Okay, Continental Cup, Hong Kong. I mean, that should be fine. She's already ahead by 10 points. Another win, we should be clear. Um, so he's already in the King Cup Autumn, but Golden Boy, I don't know if I'm putting you in that race or not. I mean, we're not chasing the GWS. But wait, who else was I going to put in this race then? Because I thought I was today saving former opera for this independence. I think I was, just to make sure he wins the, the, uh, the Dirt GWS, so... I could put Golden Boy in this, or I could just put him in the China base. Hmm. You know what? No, I'm going to go ahead and put him in this Continental. I mean, that should be easier. He's been on a slumper. We need to get him some momentum. So let's go ahead and just knock that out. Black Ruby. I might just, well, I don't really want to rest her because she's really picking up, but... 
You know, I mean, she's still got another year before she's at her peak. I might let her rest. No, oh, no, I did say I was going to run her to the Tokyo Cup. Never mind. Well, look okay, at Tigris. Now we can figure out what to do with you. That was a big redemption race. We needed that desperately. Let's go, my girl. All right. Well, seven to question mark. You still don't know. Uh, she's not going for any GWS Empress Cup. Yeah, for sure. Like, I mean, well, she'd be in the green. Maybe we should wait. Hmm. Let's see. Cotton Neptune, Long Beach Derby. Yeah, we can definitely throw her in those. Cause she's got eight, eight, nine and a half. So yeah, let's go ahead and throw her in that Neptune against the other gals. I think that's an easy one for her to snatch up. Okay, so eight double. Okay, we're gonna start dropping you back to opens here. Get you in open country. Eight to twelve she is. Okay. Is there anybody else I can run in that Philly Cup? I don't feel like she's ready for it. Free fear. After that grade three. I mean I'm not confident with either of them yet. Like today Devils her she's still not her stats are not grade one level winning yet. Not at all. Those are those are not good. Free fear, I mean, 79 speed can get her that win. I'll put her in the Philly Cup. So they double, yeah, we're definitely dropping you back to opens whenever we can. Over here, back in the blue. No. Young Corn. Ah. She can run in that, too? Oh. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, we're going to run you nine here. I'm going to keep it real simple with you. <laughs> Got a long way to go with her. So I think everybody else is ready to go. Oh my goodness. How long is it taking us to get through to the end of this year? Like, seriously, man. It's just, that's the problem with so many horses. I, I hate when the game drags like this. Like, But everybody's kind of doing good stuff here. This is a big year. It's a really big year. Because, like, I think Moonbee, we're definitely retiring him next year. Bolero, no. Stargazing, probably not. I mean, unless he continues to be on a slumper, right? I mean, I don't know if he's good. I don't know if he's able to win a GWS, honestly. Yeah, I don't know if he's. I, I think I may have missed the window. I mean, he is five. I think I missed the window between when he was three and four to really try to chase the GWS with him. So, I mean, he'll still be a great sire, but he just won't be Hall of Fame, which bit of a bummer. But I mean, he's won 15 out of 24 times. Butterfly Effect has won 17 out of 22. That's Hall of Fame worthy. Golden Boy has won 14 out of 20, you know. Golden Boy and Butterfly Effect for sure. Like I said, uh, we missed the opportunity with Golden Boy. I, I may try next year. As long as the stamina is still good, I think we could go for the turf. But yeah, I definitely missed his window. So it would be a bummer to have both of them retire without Hall of Fame. I mean, Moonbeam's going in there. It's kind of ironic. The one that I thought was going to do the worst is actually going into the Hall of Fame legitimately <laughs> with these stats. Of course, they've dropped, but this guy's going into the Hall of Fame. 10 grade 1, 16 out of 28. Hasn't even earned over 100K yet. But Golden Boy and uh, sorry, as he might miss it. If, I mean, I'd have to put them both in the GWS title hunt next year. And they technically would both be going for the same. Like, Stargazing to me is not going to be fast enough to win the sprint. That, I mean, those 70s are going to drop to 60 soon. He's not going to be able to win the sprint with these stats. No way. And uh, he's not better than Golden Boy for the mile. I mean, Golden Boy's power and stamina, his response still makes him a threat in the mile. Or the turf series, I should say. So... I would just be running Golden Boy in that. I think, like, I definitely missed a window with Stargazing for sure. I definitely needed to challenge when he was three or four, but I've kind of accepted that, so it is what it is. Like I said, he'll still be a good sire, but Golden Boy still has a chance. We have to ball out next year in the turf, which personally I would kind of rather former opera go for that. I might give them both a chance. I mean, they're both in the same class, and they both have done extremely well. So I might give them both. I mean, they both have won 14 times. Actually, I think I might give both of them a run at the GWS turf next year. 
You know what I mean? Because like I said, as long as Golden Boy still has decent stamina, like I think we have a chance. The speed's not great, but if I take advantage of that stamina and his last corner leader ability, I mean, we, we can make it work. But it's going to be tough. Might be better with Formal Opera, so I think that's all we got going here. Uh, I don't know if this is the end of this recording session or the video. Um, so if it is the end of, an end of the video, I hope you guys have enjoyed so far. I guess I should say, because of course we're continuing to play the game. And if I come back to this episode, well then obviously you know what that is as well. So, uh, yeah. Gosh, we it's the it's crawl, end of the year is crawling so slow. So slow. Just want to get through the end. But there's still a lot to achieve, so we're getting there slowly but surely. And, uh, yeah, we'll continue to ride on along. Welcome to Horse Racing Gamer, where champions are made. <laughs>